And I had one more point of order. The yes. the main guard with the longer mask mm-hmm. has negative six from their next saving throw. Yes, the negative six from the next saving throw. So I put that there to mark. Um, that figure also was Hunter's marked by Apo. Uh, Jason, were you saying something? Am I missing? I said nobody wants to talk about how our monk's about to get sacrificed by throwing it off a cliff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's. <laughs> And lastly, but not surely, uh, uh, famous last words. Zen I got this. Was was out away from you all, left early that morning, and came across uh, the harpy over there. <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> He's fighting his his harpy out there by himself. Um, and uh, and made a saving throw to a right there towards the end of the game because she was trying to lure him in uh, with that song. That's where we are at. Uh, thank you, Nick, for really great, a really, really a succinct um, recap. And so with that, what I'll also do, um, I'd like to give you one inspiration, you have two inspiration points that you start the game with, one for Proxenos and one that he can give to someone else. Mm. And, um, oh, and I guess, yeah, you can, you can do that at any time. You can kind of like, you can, almost like you could use it as a reaction to give someone a inspiration point in a time of need. Um, cool. Well, that's where we're at. It's about 635, so we're a little behind. So let's go ahead and, um, and get started. Let's see here. Um, Do you still so, have our initiative orders? Because I could put Oh, yes. Yeah. Speaking of, I, I, that was on my, to, my to-do list. I, let's just go ahead and roll initiatives. Unless everybody has their initiative order. If we don't have everyone's, let's go ahead and roll uh, initiative for today's game. All right. Yeah. And it, it's fair because I didn't even really have initiative for the for the villains that last game. So this is a fair initiative, like complete order. Don't waste them. <laughs> so if anything, you guys got a full surprise round from the last game. Uh, if you notice, there are actually only about five of those um, returned left. And they do all of them um, look very ragged and hurt by the shatter, by all of everything that you see, everything that they've kind of gone through so far. Um, the main figure in the middle still looks, still has fight. I'll say that. Um, so let's see. Let me ask uh, Apple. What did you get? Fifteen. Fitz, how about you? Also a fifteen. Okay. That's the higher dex, though. I have a plus two. So I think probably Apple. No. Oh, I no, it's really? Plus one. Yeah, got plus okay. one dex. Oh. All right. He's so funny just you being Leon, and I'm like, gotta be higher. <laughs> yeah, I looked at him like, really? Well, that and a ranger, you know? I'm just. Yeah. He's the beefy ranger, not yeah. the dexterous ranger. Yeah, he's always shooting arrows. <laughs> Bold choices. Okay. Um, let's see here. Next on that list, uh, Proxinos? 19. 19. Pythias? 7. 7. It's something about paladins. They always roll low on initiative. <laughs> it's, like, it's, re- it's in the rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they tend to have minus one. To, they to to it. <laughs> always are at the, I'm like in, in, in Edo, I'm always like towards the middle to the bottom of the pack when it comes to that. Uh, if you ever do get ahead in the initiative, oh boy. Oh, but oh boy. Yeah, it does change the... It, it, it does kind of work out that way because yeah, if you end up going first, a couple of divine, divine smites or I do like so like too because it, I've also found I've, I've played Palins a lot and it always seems like 
you do end up getting a lot of the fin the finishing blows because you go way later in the round. So you do end up stealing a lot of glory. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You, you want your times. pally and your cleric to go at the end. Yeah. They're both reactionary. One to finish stuff off, the other to yeah. clean, clean up your party who got messed up during the round. Makes sense. Yeah. How many times has Ito been like, done <laughs> yeah. and we're just like well, well, we're cool. I, I remember when he a divine bitch slapped someone <laughs> unconscious oh no it was yes. it was legendary naked that was a yeah, he was naked. in my bathroom <laughs> <laughs> oh man Taroxys. i got an eight. Oh man with advantage big lumbering <laughs> Uh, so he's right before Pythias and then Tell Moon. 23. 23. Damn. He's the guy. That little guy moves fast. Hey, uh, <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> and then uh, last but not least, Zen. 18. 18. All right, good stuff. For you aren't grateful last time. Find somebody else to haste. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, Jason on that so we open tonight's um, episode on that slow song calling Zen towards the edge of the cliff um, and as his hoofs step forward clopping a couple times one of them touches the edge uh, a few pebbles <laughs> break and fall away and at the last second he kind of catches himself um realizing what is happening um in that moment you look up zen realizing that you've pushed through the harpy song what do you what would you do next uh Next, he would use two of his key points. Mm -hmm. And let me never played a shadow monk, so it's new to me. Uh, in a 20 foot radius centered on himself, it becomes dead silent. Mm. And he will take about two, three steps away from the ledge and draw his bow and aim at the harpy nice and so he draws the bow he takes aim he releases um it flies and it 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 lodges itself uh directly like under her jaw and her throat and she goes flittering um trying to fly with so much blood leaving her body she starts to flutter down towards the ground in that moment he, he's about to descend, maybe go down into the pit to check out those bones, what may be there, when on the ground he starts to see multiple little scorpions kind of crawling out from the rocks and kind of pulling together, and you would never see that many just clumped up, and they begin to trail away, um, away from the harpy ledge, back, snaking back towards the city, um, and and he in that moment realizes that he is getting an omen it's definitely an omen from the gods and he feels like um his friends uh, may be uh, in trouble and so he begins to gallop um riding back towards the town this is when we realize it takes him maybe an, he was probably a little over an hour outside of the city he finally enters the gates um and as he rides hard he rounds the corner what we realize is in our last game those two things were not happening at the same time as he arrives on the scene uh right as the scorpions are bursting from the ground um the, he can see the Akroyan soldiers ahead. He knew that the party was headed to see Tyrannica, so he knew they would be at the Caliphon. And so um, as he rides up, slides, begins to stop. He sees those creatures, uh, these scorpions skittering around. Whatever god he worships, this 
whether it's that god or not, it all makes sense. Um, and he joins the fray beside Artemisia and Proxenos. Um, as this happens, we move into our first tell as kind of camera pans over tell moon you're up all right uh tell moon's gonna go ahead and uh burn his super saiyan he's gonna go ahead and bonus action ancestral guidance okay um getting his little his little glow on he'll reach over two steps to the left hit taroxes with haste and okay. then he's going to sprint back towards Apo. So I know Apo's fighting the other, the boss guy. So he provides the haste to Taroxes and then rushes over beside Apo. Yeah. Is he, um, is he... Well, you know, I'll, I, you, if I have the option, I'm going to try to do my game. Right? I'm going to try to run past him and see if he does it. Oh, you're going to run past him. You're, you're going for the big bad, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, well, yeah, I'm going for first, the one with the braces on, the on, right? But I want to try to run past him and see if I can provoke him. Got it. Okay, so you attack him at all on that first? Nope. Past him. Okay. So you okay? So you're running past him. Uh, give me. It's not really the same thing, but uh, give me a persuasion. Check. Sure. Or you can give me intimidation. Uh. Golly. Because with a high level Stop enemy like this, that. I imagine that he it's a chance that's, that this enemy knows what you're up to. That's a second nat 20, 27. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Either way. All right. I'll, I'll still try. I highly doubt I can be that. Save those for stabbing people. Where's my... And I'm going to use wisdom. Um... So... Uh... So with, out of those bracers, the, there's several kind of like dug in, and then out of one of the hands, it's like that kind of RoboCop style, like or under the sheath, like a dagger, and it just they, they just swing it back. It just tries to cut you as you run by. Um, Nat twenty for twenty five. All right, yeah, that's uh. That happened. <laughs> <laughs> you will take uh, five slashing damage. Uh huh. And then after you, as you run past, you you kind of feel like like an anime style. So you kind of freeze for a second Ugh! as you kind of stagger. Um, as he he swept down and like hit your like near your Achilles, and you feel you can automatically feel like a you feel fatigued almost in that leg um, as you take. 11 points of poison damage. Interesting. And That's now you not wanna... usually how that goes. <laughs> um, you can still move away. I mean, right? So is you. I mean, yeah, like I passed, where, I ran past him. Where, so, so where, yeah, where do you want to end? Where do you want to be? Um, I just, I just want to stand. I want to stand next, next to Apo ready. Oh, oh, so you're running past him and, and then coming back around to Apo? Yep. You doubled back. Yeah, now that I got stabbed when I wasn't <laughs> expecting him to be that fast, yeah. Um, so you slide back. in the dirt and immediately on your hoof start backtracking. He kind of looks at you the entire time like, what are you doing? Um, as this is happening, we move. I mean, you can concentration, you're good. Yeah. Um, so then one of the return is jumping to their feet at that moment um, and attacking at Apo. If somebody wants to put it in the chat too as I go through the list, so we'll have it after the first round, you can. Um, the, this one jumps up sweeping with this scimitar that was hidden under the cloak. Uh, does not hit for a nine. I know that misses you. As it swings, shook, it starts, Apple is already about to respond in slow motion and hit this thing as we move past to the next uh, return. Standing up and it's it wants to it's looking at Troxy's size, but it just it can't get around him, so it moves in. That one will strike. With an eighteen. 
Is that no. a no? Okay. So the second one, I mean, a third one standing up, um, using half its movement, just moves in behind the um, the one closest by. And then Zen, you're rushing and galloping up. You are up. And you guys can hear sound and everything, right? Troy, can you check your mic? Troy, oh yeah, yeah, we don't think we hear you. That better? Yeah, and so you're right here on for the top-down view, you're there, so you should be able to see yourself. Yeah, uh, I got 50 feet of movement, so I'm going yep. to get over by uh, Taroxy's and help him since second return, he's gonna run over to that one. You want to be on this side of Taroxy's yeah, or that side. that side, okay. And he's going to focus his spear attack on that second return that got up. Okay. Yep, go for it. Sure it's gonna hit and double check. 19 to hit. That hits. Okay, so eight plus four. That will be eight piercing damage. How do you do it? Oh, he's just gonna charge as he's running, turning around Troxy's, take his spear, move it to his left hand, and jab it around uh, nice. into the guy's like upper torso. And so it, because of the force, you, you kind of coming, I imagine you kind of like as you're riding around the side of Taroxy's and he see, he's distracted for a moment where he looks over and he sees it and just hits him, like I said, upper torso, lifting him off the ground, slow motion, 300 style. Um, and as you pull back, he literally slides off of it, you know, blood flying out, slams against the ground and is done for. So I'll replace that guy with another return here. So it's just one right behind him. Is there anything else you have otherwise? Uh, 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 yes, bonus action. He will rear up on his two uh, hooves, and the two front ones will do area blows and hit the other return. You got it. And, uh, well, I guess you could have moved in closer. Yeah, that would have been, you would have been within five feet. So I got you. I have 50 feet of movement. No, I know. I was, because the way I presented you before, you were like five feet, you're outside of oh, the okay. drop Copy range, that. but I just moved you up a little bit. Because I'm, I'm, if you're at the table, I'm sure you would have made sure you could hit both. First attack will be 23 to hit with. It hits. Oh, cool. Max damage on that. That's a uh, eight bludgeting. Uh, how does that one die? Uh, one of my hooves just caves in the mask. So, wow, it just, it just buckles inward like a like an aluminum foil pan and uh he just crumples the body just crumples over um some of that black smoke steaming lifting up he, leg kind of twitching um yeah i told you guys that really wrecked them last game so uh take this momentum is hard hitting as zen is finishing up there we kind of pan over and there's uh to fitz Uh, Fitz is going to... Uh, did he skip me? Oh, let oh. me see. Maybe I did. Let me see. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Uh, you were after... So you're before Zen, and so uh, it would be, for now on, it was that return, and then there's two returns that are dead, so now it's just Proxinos and then Zen. No other return before him, so go ahead, Proxinos. Okay. Um, so I see that there's a return that's prone next to um, Apodexus and the mm -hmm. return that's fighting him, right? Yeah, there's one that's about five feet away from him that's prone, yep, and then there's one that's fighting him. So, uh, Proximus, he takes the 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 handle of the of the spear of the golden spear uh -huh. and he points it up to the sky as it starts to get cloudy and he points in that with the spear or the um, the staff there, and he's casting call lightning. Nice. So and I need those two to make a deck save. All right, let's do it. So the two, 
One of them is getting it at disadvantage, being on the ground. So that one is... Um, highest was a 12. I imagine that's a fail. That is a fail for... And then the one up is standing up, got a 16. One passes. One passes. So suddenly, like you said, those clouds are gathering within, like, coming out of nowhere, and then... And then that lightning strike hits. Slamming down. Almost like it's sound distant, you know, with the rolling thunder, but then it's just, it's just a light that zaps both of them. Um, one of them I take takes half, and the other full. 17 lightning damage. Yeah. Uh, and half of that's eight. Yeah, you kill them both. <laughs> so, uh, any any flair you want to add to to that? Um, you see the 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 broken handle of that spear. It glows like the spear for a second, but then dissipates. Nice. Um. All right. So, so and then they are no more. So going back now, it should be Fitz's turn. It was after Zen. So then you just you you look over as these two are almost like they're just these scorched husks have returned on the ground. What do you do? Um, is that a giant scorpion? Yeah, there's two of them. There's one kind of camouflage here, and then one. Awesome. There. Uh, Fitz is going to pull up her pan flute and cast uh, dissonant whispers at second level and blow like two really discordant notes and that is a wisdom save of 15. nice so let's do this so uh for for wait and you're, you're casting it on both scorpions i think i can only cast it on one. one so the one the one directly in front of me yeah the closest one okay and it's a wisdom save you said yes which it's most likely going to fail uh yeah for a nine <laughs> awesome okay collect some sequences here so music spell goes off eleven eleven whole points of damage okay eleven every point counts that's a lot of damage and it's so, gonna run away <laughs> so um and just uh, and describe like the spell in terms of the effect and and what and what what type what type of damage is it? Psychic damage. Psychic damage. So she's using her pan flute to blow out these really obnoxious notes, like a child <laughs> who shouldn't have an instrument, and it is just like short of making that teacher's ears bleed, and, and it does some psychic damage. So that the thing is like skittering and almost like swinging at the noise, like, you know, cause it's just a kind of a dumb beast and it just almost like where the sounds are coming from, it's skitters this way and it like claps and then it skitters this way and it claps and, and uh, not not doing anything, but and taking that that damage in. Uh, is there anything else you want to do movement wise, bonus action wise, Fitz? Um, bonus action, I will inspire whoever is next in initiative if I can discern that. Um, oh, whoever's next. I'm sorry. That's my. Yeah, I'm not, that sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That would be. Uh, that would be Apo. Apo, hey, <laughs> did you see that sick tube? <laughs> Sweet. But yeah, Mel, I don't know if you uh, how you want to represent that, but the thing has to use its reaction to run away. Oh. Oh, it uh, does. Yes. Yes, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for I'm so glad does, you're it, does, here, it, Jason. does it? Does it? Does it? Uh, does it test every round or it runs away like Oh just for the just for the round. Just for this a reaction right Got now. It. Got it. So it run runs away. away as fast so, as possible. Let me see. Yeah. Where... Unless it's already used its reaction for some reason, but I don't Good think call. it's taking hey. a AOA or attack um, opportunity. Um let me look at the Thank speed you. on it. So about forty feet, it's gonna run. <laughs> so it tries to charge away. And what happens is, as it's rushing towards the gates, the guards, you guys can't hear me, the guards leap up and close in their phalanx 
Uh, and they they meet it like under the awning. So it's really like, it's like 40 feet. It's back there. I don't want to do too much, but, uh, and so now they're, they're like batting, you know, they're kind of like pushing back at it with their spears. Um, if it's the eighties, it's like super, uh, or the seventies, it's like super claymation, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, oh, yeah. stop motion. Yeah. Stop motion. If it's uh, now, then it's like over the top CGI. But they're fighting this giant scorpion, and so yeah, that worked. Good, good call there, Jason. Uh, so they are clamoring in and fighting the creature. She's uh, given some inspiration to Apple. Uh, the creature. It's actually, it's turn. So realistically, uh, instead of it kind of just doubling back, I'm going to have it fight off some of the. Uh, the hoplites around so it will use its turn so you just see it like striking with its claw one of it so it, it it strikes one of the guys with a claw and it picks him up and starts crushing him you start to see like blood pouring out of his mouth um and then and then as another one comes in it takes the same claw while it's holding one of the guys and bashes the other guy down he falls on the ground and then um, Jin just stings the guy on the ground. So he like, Ugh! and he goes limp. So two of them went down uh, through the guards. He's like literally locked to him. Oh, damn, minis. All right. So the, the scorpion spins its turn, kind of fighting off uh, those guards as his apple see this happening. Um, the main villain or figure here watches his scorpion run away and kind of like whistles towards the creature and it stops clawing, um, stands there for a second. What do you do? Um, let's move, let's move toward him and back. Is, is that returned the one that was there is he down or is he still oh yeah up? there's 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 one that's there's uh oh yeah he killed both of these guys sorry okay <laughs> i didn't mean i just forgot I was to like, remove I was them like, from the board okay. they got struck by the lightning so yeah so there's literally uh two of them two of them left one that hasn't got up yet and one right here and let me check my okay. sources to make sure that is correct oh no there's three left so because there's one that's yeah, the one over there, that's the one who summoned these ones, right? The the long mask? This is the long mask. Yeah. Okay. These are two. And then, Zen, did you kill your last guy you attacked? You did, right? Yes. Yeah, you did. So, and that Fear actually and puts hope. those. There is only two. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there should only be two left. Then that, that's correct. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, then, Apple. So, he's going for his first attack, and that's 12 to hit. Yep. And then I and remember when if you if he's forced to make a save or anything, uh, Nikki's minus six kind of pops in. Okay. Next one is twenty three to hit. Twenty three does hit. Yes. And then that's going to be um, <laughs> like three damage with the mace. Three damage. So you you club uh, the figure boom right across his face. The mask just snaps back and looks at you. Takes the three. Um, uh, that's, that's too far. Uh, now that's it. That's it. All right. So, is anything else is, is too far? As Apo is fighting, they he they responds, and you and these two daggers, you know, he's like, you guys are just kind of like locked in combat. Um, as we move towards uh from apo to scorpion for the second scorpion so out of the corner of your eye as you're fighting apo you see this this creature skittering towards you and bearing down it's out of the way as it rushes in uh reaching out with one of its claws it's just you, you like literally you're Leon and you're just able to, you know, use your scimitar and, and, and 
uh, strike the claw away and then kind of slide under it. That first one not hitting. The second claw. Seventeen. That hits. I need a Oh. No, you're automatically grappled. So it just grabs Apple, picks him up. Um starts kind of swinging him in that that uh, left claw back and forth. Uh wildly as you see him ah lion tongue hanging out. Um, and then it goes to strike with the stinger. Uh, so, oh, so that claw check will do, you will take nine uh, bludgeoning damage. And then a nat 20 for 24 on the stinger. Stop it. <laughs> How far it, away is he from it's me? It's the legend of sting. <laughs> yes, the legend of sting. No kidding. <laughs> How far away is he from uh, You're me? about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 feet. And okay. actually with you being big, 5, 10. That's yeah, 25. true. I'm a 10 by 10. Yeah, uh, yeah oh, I'm yeah. going to go ahead and invoke the Cloud Rune as a reaction. Okay. That, uh, that nat 20. Uh, you know what? He may be immune to it, but he stung the other scorpion. So, so it transfers the sting, the... Yes, I'll go ahead and reread that. Got uh, it. Once per short rest, when you are a creature you can see within 30 feet of you is hit by an attack roll, you can use your reaction to choose a different creature other than the attacker, who within 30 feet to become the target of the attack instead using the same roll. Got it. Okay. Um, that's one, only the only thing I hate about that rule is trying to justify how it happens. It's just like magic. It just like flies away. So yeah, it... The, that that stinger that so all the damage gets transferred to the scorpion and I imagine it's going to be it's going to hit when that scorpion ends up coming back which it will uh, and that stinger or um, somehow as it as it moves around almost as you guys are moving in a circle for a second as it moves to about here it stings the other scorpion uh, the scorpion will take it while it is immune to the poison damage it will take the strike damage. Um, yeah, um, I guess cinematically, like not looking for advantage, but the way I imagine it is because it's invoking. I mean, with the rune knight, it's invoking the giant magic, but invoking uh, the cloud magic. So like the sting goes in, but the point passes through a through a mist, a vortex, and comes out and hits the and hits the just, other one. And it's just a tiny one. So like yeah. literally, just the point of the stinger pops through pops and through. smacks into the other opponent. Nice. I like that. I like that version. Um, and so it take okay. So it took four damage. So the other one has been pierced. Let me make sure I give it its hit. All right. Um, that taking us back after that stinger goes in. Oh, actually, it would have been doubled. So because of sorry, because it was a crit, it was a crit. And that's funny. So, yeah. Yeah. So give me. We do that one more time without adding the. So then, so 12 instead. So nice. I've got you, Apo. Ooh, nice move there. Um, so Taroxy's kind of invokes the rune. Uh, camera panning over. Pythias are standing right there, right next to Fitz. What do you do? It, does Taroxy's get a turn? Was that before him? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was his reaction. Taroxy's, you are up. Oh, okay, awesome. Uh, seeing that, it's uh, not a great day for his friends, so he is going to bump, 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 bump his way over to the scorpion holding, uh, holding Apo, and he's yeah. going to bring the maul down on the joint of the claw holding Apo in the air. Right. And we're going to hope the D&D Beyond Dice cooperate today. They're not going to because that first strike is a nine. Okay. The second strike's a nat one. And you gave me, um, and you had advantage for because oh no, was... that was just the oh two two attack cloud room. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so I rolled two nat ones. As you're swinging, um, this would be one of those chances. What I'll do is That's give you the. Since you're aiming, you're 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 calling for a certain shot. This will be a little harder. Um, 
the one of your strikes is a possibility to get advantage on it. So cinematic advantage. Can you give me um, a sleight of hand check? I know you're swinging, but this is to see if you can be accurate and hit. Which right Thank so far you're not, but let's see if you I can have get a second roll. The D and D beyond I say twelve. <laughs> say twelve. Unfortunately, that will not. So your two ones will stand as you kind of trip forward in the, the hammer using axe hammer. What are you? What's your? Oh, uh, it's the maul. The maul. So your maul kind of slams down, um, kind of glancing off of the, but as it's pulling apple away, it does nothing. Um, as this is happening, we move to so yeah. So then, if you if you're done, then we move to Pythias. All right, uh, Pythias. Well, we've got one return still on the right of the scorpion, right? Yep, right there. And then there's one uh, one there's here one that hasn't back stood there. up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not worried about him right now. But yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Pythias is going to charge in um, after the returned who is near him. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know if this is one of the ones that was looking staggered already, but uh, he is going to charge in and trying to do like a backhand uh, sword slash. Okay. Give me the attack. Uh, okay, I don't think that's going to hit with a ten. Oh, so he like just like like kind of like you pay parries your blow. And you both kind of, uh, it's it, it's because the ground is kind of, some of the mud that's come up from the, the broken rocks and stuff, you kind of both are slipping. And so your 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 blade doesn't connect. Um, yeah. It's going to grit his teeth and come back in the other direction with another okay. strike. The uh, dice gods which, are very unhappy. That's a 22 to hit. That will hit. Yeah. And uh, we're, doing, we're doing a divine smite with this as well. Because why not? I believe he's undead. He looks so, really yeah. weak. That's fine. Okay. There's no uh, kill like overkill. Obliterate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. End this whole man's so on life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. On Real... life. <laughs> Don't Roll break the mask. Uh, <laughs> but still, that is 12 damage. Well, including. So, how, how, what does it look like? Yeah, as you, you know, the what is the fear that this this undead sees before it it is sent back to to the Knicks? Who even knows if these things even go back to the underworld at this point, as yeah, they've escaped know. once before? Um, yeah. What is it? What is it? What Wait, happens? He came in with the backhand, grit of the teeth, and at that point is um, like calls for divine power, and as he slashes down, the light builds, and doesn't even bother about like this thing blocking the blow it just smashes down with bludgeoning rather than Ooh. grace nice is there the any is there flashes. any water element to your magic uh, when he does this or no or is it just light is it like not, is it in the form this, of no nope? for this okay. no it just blast of light and crushes the uh you say you're still using the, the blunt edge of the, of the well of just the I'm, I'm i'm more concerned about smacking him rather than trying to be graceful about it yeah um, you smack him and he literally, uh, you know, crumples him and he goes flying like 10 feet, slams into the wall behind you and he's just pure divine force and there's no more. Great. Uh, if I have any more movement, I have all my, mm-hmm. I did all my attacks, but you I got plenty of movement. You moved about 10 feet to him and then, so. Yeah. So I was, I was going to close around on the back of the scorpion. If it's still up, but when my turn comes again, there can be some shenanigans. Nice. <laughs> Got you right there. All right. All right, so the creatures are skittering. Um, blades are flying, and uh, we move to, I think it's the last two, so little, only one return stands up. Um, and staggers over. It kind of seems like he's out of it, trying to move towards it. And he'll dash just to be, to, to try to provide, won't do anything, but will be able to get to where Apple is and starts, you know, trying to prepare. <laughs> it's like in no condition to fight, but trying to prepare to help his, whoever his, his leader. This is our first round of combat. 
Um, as this is happening, the other two, the, the couple of uh, Akron guards who are there. Now, remember, this is all happening within seconds. So imagine reinforcements should arrive very quickly, but these are still just the only two guards that are there. You hear a couple of horns going off. Those two fight valiantly, doing a little bit of damage to the creature in front of them. So you hear like them, you see them stab in and the scorpion takes some more damage. And it's starting to stagger and kind of green droplets of blood from its under uh, belly are starting to, you know, showing and there's slashes from all the damage you guys have done to it on the carpus above. Uh, we're back at the top with Telmoon. Built this character to do this, so this is the flashy <laughs> life I gotta live. Telmoon <laughs> seeing this scorpion occupied by his friends is going to try to slip around to Roxy's and this claw Apodexus is holding, flip up and over, do a roll over its back and try to get behind the captain. Hopefully it's not expecting me to come from that direction. <laughs> so that that is his goal. He's going to circle through, but not run around. He's going to jump over the scorpion as he does it. So you you literally don't want, you're actually, you're, that's not yeah, fair. I'm, I'm not going moving. to the right. You actually want I'm to do to go this. To the right, and I'm trying to jump over and God. roll over the scorpion's back, like under its tail. I like it. Um, give me <laughs> acrobatics check. That I can do. I'm going to use the die that gave me the two dot 20 back to back. Hopefully it doesn't. Okay, that's only 11 on the die, but plus six, so 17. So you tell Moon to run and he leaps. The claw, one of the claws strikes out. You land on the claw running. As you land, you leap off the first claw kind of twirling through the air. It's like ooh, slow motion. The, the stinger tail is like going above, like right above you as you fly over. Roll off of the second claw before it snaps. So roll through the second claw before it slaps up off the ground, um, getting at gaining advantage on the dude behind. Just screw this guy. He messed up my cold <laughs> the first time. <laughs> All right. Let's try to hit this dude with my you know what I, lay. Oh, I You know what I skipped? I skipped the villain. Last Ooh, turn. What villain? Oh, the okay. big guy. It's fine. The no big guy. I skipped the guy. I skipped the guy. So yeah, after I'll let you finish. Well, let him turn then, around and hit me after I do this. Yeah, let yeah. You, you finish yeah. up and then he'll oh, he'll, no. he'll rattle off. But, and I, but I he won't, he won't attack too, you. He won't attack you. He won't attack anybody that wasn't there. Um, I'll, I'll keep it to Apo. <laughs> oh, is, was Ar Artemisia going to get a turn too, or is she not in this? She's fight? no. She's kind of just standing in the back. <laughs> all right. <laughs> letting letting the watching the party. In all he their stopped, glory. dropped, and rolled. She's yeah. in like she's in a defensive kind of stance, but she's not she's not fighting. She's not in her garb either, so she's she feels like you guys have it, hopefully. She's more so talking hopefully. to the guard, she's calling out, telling people to get out of the way, you know, clearing the square. She's doing that. Yeah, so that's a twenty five to hit. That's gonna hit. All right, and that's going to do four plus four plus five damage, which is thirteen thirteen damage to him. And as I make contact, you hear that ring as if I hit the forge. <laughs> and then I, as I stab him, I roll backwards and talk, because I'm not trying to be in his attack range yep. right now, because I felt that first one and that hurt. And so where are you moving to? Just, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm back, back corner. I'm, I'm, I'm going Over back this corner. Way? I'm, uh, yep. Okay. I'm trying not to let that other scorpion see me over there. I don't want to get <laughs> <laughs> pincered. Um, so the figure will... Okay. Oh, this um... is a big boss, right? It's not a big... I mean, I wouldn't call it a big boss. I was calling it the leader, you know, whoever this, this one returned. Um... Right, yeah, I'll end my turn now. Okay. Uh... The creature, the so um, it strikes out with uh, one and no, all right, it's gonna be I'm trying to think what what it would actually do here. What he would actually do. He's gonna strike. We'll try that apple with the short sword. That's for twenty one. Jeez. And so eight slashing damage, Apo. And uh, and as well as eight poison damage. Oh. 
And actually, I, I gave you eight. I'm sorry. Make that. That should have been a D4. Give me a second. I'm using dagger. So make that eight, four. So uh, four. So make the eight six. So the first attack was six damage. The second was eight poison damage. So you, you saved you by two hit points. You can take two of those. Get two of those back. Um, and so as he gets punched in the back or slammed in the back by Tell Moon, um, he's already cutting uh, at Apple. And then he turns, looking for, like looking back, and his hand puts his hand out like a force, and it starts to glow, and like lightning starts to crackle around it. But he doesn't. Tell Moon has already kind of run behind the scorpion, and he's like, ah, like fuck, like can't do it, and turns back to fighting Apple. Um, so that puts us back. Tell Moon's done. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's no more drip, so then it's Proxenos. All right. Um, is there is there a spot that Proxenos can hit the Scorpion and the the last return? Um. Uh, yes. Uh, like literally, where you're standing, if it's if it's going straight forward, it would hit it would hit him in a diagonal right there. Oh, it's coming from the sky, right? It's, so it's, it's, a, it's, oh. a, it's a lightning strike. It's a lightning he, strike. Yeah. So yeah, so the, but lightning is it's a line, right? No, it's a five foot like. Oh, it's a air, five foot. Yeah. If it's five foot, if it's five foot between those two, then it would hit both of them. All or right. five foot, or you could do it five foot in between. It would hit the scorpion and him. Perfect. Raises up the the. So you want the scorpion again. and the baddie, or the or the and the leader, or the the scorpion the and the baddie. Okay. Two deck saves. Um. Ooh. Hold on, I'm trying to find my guy here. Scrolling. Okay, so first deck save. Man, not good. Gonna fail with a seven. Um, and then the second one, the little return drifter is gonna get. Three. So you see Proxenos as he points his staff up to the air and he says, Get out of Akros! And they both take a fat 20 lightning damage. Oh, 20? 20 lightning damage. Nice. All right. So one, I mean, this guy literally turns to dust. <laughs> like, just like you watch him just crumple down. Um, the, the returned leader there takes 20. Yep. And it's like, ah, and you, it's shaking. You could tell it. It's hurting as it rolls through the body. Um, and it's still standing. But it's kind of smoking when it's done in that moment. It was like, it was kind of turned backwards towards Tell Moon and he, he spins around. And that mask looks directly towards you, Proxenos. And then it, you know, the, the body kind of like, like what? And then um, Mass says, the, through the you know this heavy voice the one in the mass says stay out of my way day dream walker and then can and then kind of refocuses because like apple's blade is coming and he whoo, got a steps out of the way of another strike um as this is happening proxy knows anything else that was a devastating oh. that was a great great move and uh... And in a and as a bonus action, as he as he points his staff over to Apodexis, you get healed for five points, and you get two temporary hit points. As I was at two. <laughs> And you hear the, the whisper. Banish them. And you have inspiration. Nice. It's 
Proxenos provides that inspiration. Zen, you are up next. Um, I'm checking. Okay. Uh, Zen will move from. <clears throat> He's going to rear up on his hind hooves, move to the left, and immediately jettison from the corner of that like crater map. Jettison to the right, heading towards the scorpion and. Uh, this scorpion or this one? guy? The one where everyone's at. Okay, and where are you saying again? Sorry, I kind of right missed something. Right there, up. that's perfect. That's perfect? Okay. Yeah. In the middle of that run, he's going to flip his spear from his forearm into a backhand, throw it at the scorpion. Okay. <laughs> he releases the spear. That's a 21 to hit. That will hit. That is seven piercing damage to him. And as he throws, his arm goes across his body. He gets up close to the uh, long mask guy. Mm -hmm. He's going to hit him with a back elbow Ooh. and a left hook at the same time for area blows. All right. Blows go out. Uh, let's see. 16. That will hit. Okay. That will be six damage on the first attack on him. Okay. Actually, before you even get that second attack off, um, you, uh, you 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 say you like kind of back like that elbow strikes yeah. against the mask and blows and it's like it's in that moment where he's saying like you know he's saying that thing to Proxenos like get out of my way Dave Walker and then just boom the, as the the javelin is slamming into the creature. Uh, he's getting struck in the face. You like knock him off of his feet, uh, and you hear him like scream like a, a, a curse under his breath. But it's like in some language you don't under, understand unless you speak something like something underworld like. Um, and he just goes up, uh, and he brings his hands to his chest as he's in the air, and bursts, and just kind of like turns into smoke. But you notice that the smoke is is buzzing, and you realize it's like an entire like. It's like a batch of wild insects or hornets, bees, uh, and they immediately spread out to a 20-foot uh, radius uh, as insect plague takes place as he evaporates. I need everyone to give me a con saving throw. Everyone within, actually. So it's... Uh, I think, Mickey, I think Fitz, you're good. So I'm gonna say Pythias, Telmoon, Zen. Uh, I think Fitz and uh, and uh, Proxenos are excluded from this. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Um, Six. Fourteen. Eight. Have inspiration. Oh yeah. All right, so I heard so far, uh, I, heard, I heard six. Yeah, Fif six any, un, under 15 is going to fail. Anything Ignore the six. The six is not <laughs> going to stand. It's not going to stand? Okay. So he's gonna, you're going to re-roll or you're... He's, he's using his inspiration. There you go. Ooh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you blessed? I also Ooh. gave him inspiration. Yeah. Okay. A D8 a while ago. Yeah. And I remember... Uh, Apodexis, Taraxi is in Telmuner Quest. And I just used, I used my um, inspiration. That's a lot of value. All right, so uh, any 15 or higher, you pass. Uh, anything under, you fail, and you either take uh, 26 uh, points of uh, uh, piercing damage or half of that would have killed me. Um, Thirteen, <laughs> and it's like these just fly, like they're like hornets, and they're just buzzing and stinging and biting, and then they start to dissipate. Off oh crap! Time. So it's almost like he just, he just turned into like bugs. And oh, are you down regardless? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, buddy. It's... But that have, like outright killed you? No. No. 26? Apple, did you ever... I just realized... 
Because you are still grappled. You're still grappled. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, you're still grappled. I'm, I'm still grappled um, on top of that. So what I'm going to, because I know you you actually, I described all that as you fighting, so I hate going back on when I, I it's my mistake. So um, you're still down. Uh, so it serves its purpose. You're down. It, it doesn't matter. So the, the I, I'm going to, even though those double ones never hit, well, imagine that somewhere in the melee, it it dropped you with Taroxes was, was pummeling into it, trying to get a hit off. Um, to try to save its own hide. Um, all right, so we move to. So yeah, oh. it just that 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 leader's gone. The scorpions are still there. And bless is gone. Sorry. Damn. Um, did you uh, did you use your inspiration to reroll your con? You did. And what was it? It was a fifteen. Okay, and then you used. Nikki's inspiration to try to save for the blessed. It went. <laughs> because Nikki gave you Bardic, right? Am I tripping? Well, he would have gone down either way. Yeah. Oh, Pythias went down. No, Pythias. Yeah, no, 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 I'm talking about I'm talking about Pythias's bless. He he lost <laughs> yeah. his cons, uh, concentration. He lost concentration. Yeah, he lost concentration. Yeah, I'm wondering, do you? Because it sounds like Nikki gave him inspiration. I was wondering if he used that. Didn't oh, he, he was too. just seeing. She didn't give me inspiration. He gave it to oh, Apple. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Wrong person. <laughs> yep, no more bus. Yeah. All right. Um we going back in. Uh we were kind of finishing up Zen your your movement yeah, there. He, yeah. He's looking hurt. That hurt him badly. He can still move if he needs to. Um, uh, yeah, he's going to run over, let's see, what was that, like 15 feet, mm -hmm. 20 feet? Doesn't matter. I still got, like, plenty. I have 50. Where he's just going to go? run back towards um, Fitz and Roxinos. Is covered in hornet whelps right now. <laughs> All right, as he gallops away, Fitz is up. Now, both scorp the scorpion in the back is looking haggard and bleeding. The scorpion on the other side still has been hit, but still got a lot of life in it and moving around, whipping that tail violently. Um, where is Apodex? Um, Raffled right somewhere? here, Apple is down right beside yeah. Taroxes, next to the, right in the scorpion's kind of way. Uh, I imagine the scorpion isn't immediately trying to, you know, and now that he goes down, it's like looking towards Taroxes, it's kind of fighting its way, oh. since it's being surrounded by all of you. Uh, Fitz is going to, uh, like, creep along the outside of trying to, like, stay out of its visual range and get to Apo and she's gonna kind of like do a tuck and roll type motion and like touch his foot and oh, do I see two moves at second level. All right, go ahead. Give him the. And that'll be two d eight plus four. Fifteen points restored for you, Apo. So Apple leaps right back into the fray, waking up. Did the scorpion drop him when he went down? <laughs> I I imagine he's still in the claw, so I tried to, like, creep under it and just, like, poke him. No, we retconned it because what we said is because Apple actually, I just, I let him go through an entire round of fighting. Uh, Got it. Last game. Oh, my fault. So what I said is that somewhere the scorpion actually dropped him, so he's not in the claw. Uh, I it. didn't really mind it because he was down, but you, that, you circumvented that. <laughs> And you're back on your feet. Come on, get in the game, get in the game. I like smack him in the ankle. Um, and bonus action. Um, there's still like a big main scorpion that's still there's, around. There's one there, one there. This one looks stronger, that one looks weaker in terms of life. This one looks pretty tough, pretty, pretty pretty beat up. But both of them are still fighting furiously. 
much as it can. Uh, the best I can do is an unsettling word. Um, on one of the scorpions, they're gonna take four which one do you, points. Which one do you want to choose? The, the closest Weak. one. Closest one? Okay, and that one's gonna take yeah. what? Uh, minus four off of its next saving throw. Alright. And if I have any movement left, I will tuck and roll out of the way. So you did 20. So dun, are you dun, 30 or, dun, or do you move 35? Dun, dun. So you can move back right behind Taroxy's? Yeah, I have 35 feet. Okay, so then that gets you right here. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So as you're backing away, the scorpion that's under the overhead, it just it clatters and it spins around and its tail, not the stinger, just the tail whips the other two uh, soldiers that it was fighting and they slams them against the wall and like sm kind of like smears them and they just drop. They're not all bloody, but you can probably looks like their chests are like caved in. As it spins around and just goes and starts clamoring forward, closing in on like, uh, yeah, I imagine locks up right here with Taroxys. Now, because it's in the middle of it, uh, there is a, ch uh, yeah, okay, because you know, Apple, you're up, but you're still like, when you're, you're still prone. Yeah. What's that? He's prone. Yeah, he's still prone. So you're just in the middle of this, like fighting out with these, you know, claws are all around you. So uh, I'm gonna try to split it up a bit fairly. So this, this scorpion, the one that's kind of on its deathbed, is going to strike out a claw. First one against Taroxys. That's a 20. 30, 20. 20. Just hits. Just hits. Even with haste? Haste brings you up to 20. Golly, man. Use your shield of faith, man. <laughs> Eight. And then um, and it grapples Taroxys. He's so big. It's like having a tough time lifting him off the ground. But he's just kind of trying to move him back and forth, and Trox is trying to keep some leverage, some weight there. Um, the other claw uh, strikes. Actually, the stinger strikes down towards the ground. Kind of st as Apple is trying to roll and move for a 14. Uh, and I get advantage, so, for four so 14 is the highest. Mm -hmm. Nope. So you roll out of the way of that, thankfully uh, dodging a stinger and more poison. <laughs> and then the other claw uh, swings out towards Taroxy's once again, hitting a 17 and missing. Nah. All right. Um, that scorpion is done. Apple, you are up. Okay. So yeah, so he's up. Um, so both scorpions are within five feet, right? I'm imagining us both like back to back two anvil rods oh. against each scorpion. Oh, this is this is gonna be good. So, um, first uh, first attack on the one that's um, on its last legs. So that's a that's 19 to hit. He's still there, but it's holding. Yep, 19 to hit the scorpion, and that then does hit. Okay, and then it's that one's three damage, and then he's going to he's going to strike at it again. All right, Just cut the cut the arm, holding him. Sixteen to hit. That hits as well. And uh, and that's going to be another six damage. Takes it. Still up, surprisingly, but 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 looking very hurt, kind of on its deathbed. And. Uh, going to use Horde Breaker on the other Scorpion. Okay. And what does that remind me what that does? So uh, on each of your turns, you can make a weapon attack with the same weapon um, against a different creature that is within five feet of the original target and within range of the weapon. Got it. So you can just make attack so, on this one? Yeah. All right. 13. 13 will miss, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I think then the last thing it will do, um, so bonus action, um, daunting roar on that one that, that I just attacked. So he just lets out. So DC 14. Wisdom, wisdom save. 
and it fails. <laughs> so it is afraid of you. Yeah. All right. So it kind of stops in mid, skitters back a bit. Um, Apple does anything else to end your turn. And then we move to the, that's, that literally right after you, Apple, is that scorpion. Um, that scorpion being terrified of you uh, pivots uh, around. Small pivot towards Telmu. <laughs> and uh, we'll, stri- we'll, we'll, we'll strike towards these guys. So first one, first strike, uh, claw towards uh, Pythias. That's a nine. Not going to do anything. Uh, sw- another claw strike, this one towards Telmu. That's not going to do anything. Uh, and then a stinger towards Pythias. 17. That's my armor class. Oh. For four uh, the piercing damage. Mm-hmm. And as it slams into you, uh, you also take, you feel the 19 points of poison damage. Okay. So 23. 23. Okay. And because of what is this thing? That would have taken me down, but because of heroic destiny, all right, I come back with one hit point. Nice. So, so it, it strikes you like right in the shoulder, and it goes into your. It like pierces like your like the breastplate of the armor that you're wearing, like where the flap is right there in the corner comes up. Um, you feel light on your feet, and then you feel that that surge and fighting through. And you stay standing, and the creature is just confused. Um, and the, any beast, any normal beast, you realize, you know, would have would would have run by now. Any normal creature, or animal, uh, but these things are summoned. These things clearly fight to the end, uh, and you all are realizing that. But you're realizing you're starting to gain the upper hand. But you've got a that stinger is deadly. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, that creature's done. Camera spins back over, and we're on Taroxes, who's being grappled so to break your uh your grapple you have to give me a strength uh, save all right i can do that how does a 23 sound sounds great and you so if you want to describe that but you're kind of pulling those claws back just there's a clack and then he drops to the ground like the the two feet above the ground that he was sitting yeah, that and does then, use your action, but you've got bonus, so you can move or whatever you're smoking. Oh, you've right. got a hasted action as well, sir. Mm, yeah, I do. So with the haste action, I'm going to bring down the mall again. Does a 24 hit? That does. All right. Let me calculate that. That is 13 total damage. How do you do it? Uh drops to the ground and immediately before it can even realize that it's dropped him, the maul connects between the eyes. It just brings it down in the middle. And it's just sitting there and like the head crushes into the ground and the body continues to try to move and scatter and all this like green is just gushing and gushing and gushing and then one of the limbs collapses, one of the large claws, another claw that stinger moves wildly whipping and slams down against the dirt a couple times this one is no more and then he's going to reach and push apodexus behind him as he gets in between apodexus and the other scorpion to activate his action surge there we go and so he is going to swing that maul again at the base of the stinger so where the stinger connects to the abdomen that's my third nat one of the night. Uh, <laughs> the second one, however, is my fourth nat one of the night. Oh my god! And all on weapon attacks. Stop it! Stop! I have um, a plus seven, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um. Oh gosh. That's with okay. the reaction, I need a strength. A, not a strength save, but just a strength check from you, Taroxes. Alrighty, I can do that. Let me... 
Oh, now you want to roll well. <laughs> That's a 23. So with you kind of swinging wildly and missing with your maul, you stagger forth and that that's the, the, the scorpion whips his tail and it and it, it slams and you, you're able to bring up your maul and block it. Um, and it's not like it's making attack, it's more so the wild whip of it. And you almost lose the weapon. Like it almost like, it, and as it flies out of your hand, you reach up and grab it with one hand and bring it back around. Like as it would have flown, it would have been flung like 40 feet away from you. I have a backup. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's so the turn. The turn. We move from Taraxes to Pythias. All right. So yeah, Pythias uh, is staggered and just like wobbling with the pain of that poison yeah. going through him. Uh, but he stays standing and raises his sword and says, I don't fear you, land lobster. And he's <laughs> going to use a bonus action for a vow of enmity. Ooh. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So uh, you're going to attack. You're going to attack twice at advantage. You got you're it. Go right in between. We'll go right. Uh, you know, up the gut between mm -hmm. the claws, striking at the eyes. Okay. Okay, and Open that up. is uh, soft twenty for the first attack. That hits. Yeah. Uh, and gonna. How how was it looking? It's it's not as roof. It still looks like it has. It looks like it could it could um, survive another twelve mm. seconds. You know of of combat. It, it's depending looking on double smiteable, Colin. It's looking double yeah. smiteable. Yeah. I'm going to be using a second level divine smite. Okay. For this one. Yeah. So let me roll that damage. As a power, everything looks smiteable. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Somebody get the butter. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, and one more. Oh, wow. Okay. That's 21 for the first strike. Oh, no. Sorry. 21 plus. Do, do, do. Plus six. 27. Plus six. All right. Um, and you got another blow, right? That was the first yeah. one. So, yeah, it looks like it may. If this goes well, it may not be surviving another one second. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can't survive another round, so. <laughs> and natural 20. Oh, on this one. Damn. go. Uh, roll out your damage and then tell me how you how you do it. All right. Just for the sake of see how much you how much you pummel it. And uh... do uh, I have more spell slots? Man, oh, smite it because the smite natural is 20, also mandatory. double. Yes. <laughs> Obviously. Lay it down. Your we judgment. know the rules. You roll 20, you smite. What were you talking about again, about Paladins always getting the last hit? Yeah, this is what we just yeah. said, right? <laughs> they go last, but they finish the fight. They finish the fight. They... That's 34 and that's funny, it literally is Pythias that we would have been going into the next round. <laughs> um, how much was it? 34. That's amazing. Um, so, yeah, what is, I mean, what is your, what does it look like? I mean... I, I said I was going for the eyes, so I headed right towards the middle. Uh, go in and stab one eye and stab the other, both of them blinding yeah. it with that like divine power. If you, if I may, I imagine almost as you slice into one eye, you drive it across through the skull. Like, so you don't even pull it out, it's just cutting it. That other eye kind of like bubbles out as you slice across to that other eye and then jam it in further where you start to slice under, like, underbelly and it, it, it kind of like opens up and just spills, its inner spill out. And it like immediately collapses. Where the, the other one had a long death, this one just like you just hit the brain and it just done. And uh, all is quiet for a moment. Just as the rest of the city guard are, <laughs> uh, it's like rounding the corner from either side. There's like 15, five guards here, five running down from the up above, five over here. <laughs> and they're seeing uh, people in the people who are like still people who didn't flee are still kind of like start to. Yeah, bronze bullies, you know, cheer goes up, praise. Um, from that praise, each of you all gets an inspiration point. Um, nice. Keep, keep your inspiration. Can their praise send us to the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got a meeting with the queen. Clean yourself up. We're here uh, for a reason. <laughs> is there anyone that is like in critical condition? I, I have one hit point. Uh, 
We have three. I think we have three characters in single digits right now. Yep. Pisces, um, what is your lay on hands pull at this level? It's it's pretty good. So I I could heal myself. That's fine. Artemisia. Oh, no. so I was just trying to take the healing away. I was just trying to figure out what the number was. It's twenty five. Yeah. Well, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I I can just use that. Um. I will, I will also walk over and lean on Taroxes. Be like, we need to cook. We need to cook it quickly, or the flavor will be ruined. I can. If we uh, bring it back to my house, I can cook up some good scorpion. Just then, Taroxes goes from yay high to still quite yay high, but he leans down and almost whispers in Pythias' ear, I don't eat. <laughs> can you cook? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Artemisia walks over to Proxenos and says, I'm proud of you and your group. I am, you never cease to amaze me. I realize you really are in good company, my son. Um, and as you all stand there, kind of these bodies splayed all over the place, these returned. Um, Get the masks. Yeah, I imagine that. Epo's, Epo's going in like collecting uh, the masks. Is, is there anything else that you plan to do in this scene or, you know, before we kind of close out our fate and, and transition? Um, um, Proxenos would, would definitely go to Apo and say, you did well. And puts a hand out and will give him... Proxenos has favorites. <laughs> He'll give him 25 hit points. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's very good. Can I get a perception check for, uh, all around? Actually, who's got the highest passive perception? <laughs> Probably one of the wisdom characters. Apple I got 13. Proxenos? I got 15. Okay, oh, here it is. 15. And then can I get a perception? I'll, ta I'll take your 15 as the highest, but I will also take a perception check from Telmoon and Taroxes. Oof. Yep. Okay, I'm quite confused go. with these dice. You have to switch it up. <laughs> everything Change I'm good dice. at, I'm terrible at. But everything I'm terrible at, I'm good at. <laughs> it's an 18 roll. for yeah, my yeah, roll, 8 perception. So I'll start with Zen. In the, oh, what did you get, uh, Telmo? I got a 17, but... 17, 17 18. So almost going from Zen looking down and as you see Apple starting to collect the 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 the, the, um, the masks for a second Zen you look at the cloth like you start to just think why what was going on here and what was this what was this attack about I think Armesia's already you know kind of asking Proxenos or talking to him about it and at that moment Taroxes you're looking down and realizing and it's starting to kind of Another thing is starting to kind of flood back in your mind is, yeah, these were, they're wearing Perforos, you know, garb marching towards, you know, the Caliphon or the capital of the, of the city. Um, and you wonder if this warrants further investigation. Um, and that will uh, crash to black and take a five minute commercial break and uh, come back. Cool. All right. Roxy's is personally offended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, hardcore. I'm at six. Yeah, I can use. I have lay on hands. Insect plague. Or Tomu's gonna go ahead and uh, limp over to Zen, the, the neglected voice, yeah. <laughs> with his eight hit points. <laughs> He's just gonna hang out in the corner. <laughs> can you help me reattach wow. this arm? I appreciate it. <laughs> so okay, so who else? Does anybody else need to be healed? Um, if we have spare healing, I could take it. I mean, I me, yeah, I could me heal. is different. Nice. I'm sitting yeah. about half. I'm alive. Here's some wounds. I'm yes. alive. It's okay. Uh, high enough to use my key to heal myself. Proxenos gives a gives like a thumbs up to you, Zen, cool. and to you, Telmoon. Under so, a quarter health. Hey, you, have, eight. You, Zen, you get four room. hit Got points it. back and one temporary hit point. And Telmoon, you get one hit point back <laughs> and one temporary hit point. Yeah, your mom's a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Say it louder for the acro ones in the back. Uh, did anybody else need any? 
Don't worry, I'm at How nine. How much now. did I get? You got, you got four and one temporary hit point. Cool. Uh, I'm double digits, barely. He's at ten. I'm at nine. Okay. Thanks. So let me... Thanks. For us. <laughs> no problem. So that's Mine. another nine. That's another nine for you, Zen. I'll, I'll walk over and give Telmoon five hit points. Yay, <laughs> double digits. Hand. Yeah. <laughs> Almost half health. Let's do it. Appreciate it, sir. Yeah, we got so many healers, but y'all all stingy. <laughs> I can't heal that a bunch. Much. <laughs> do, you need, do you need more? My healing is oh. really good for picking people up. Yes, your healing is only good for picking people up, really. Which is very useful. Like, it's immediate. You're basically a great player inside of your druidness. Does anybody else need? No? You know, it's fine. We're going to take a short rest. Okay. No one's gonna attack me. I'm gonna tell him gonna sleep through this meeting. He's not trying to talk to nobody. I can't waste right. any more smite energy on healing anyway. No, yeah, you keep it. Yeah, I gotta keep move it. to the other room, so I shall be back. Yes, Nikki, Nikki. I think only I think half of our party has healing abilities. I'm looking also, at the... I feel so special. <laughs> but like, nobody volunteers. To... But Nikki, I appreciate it. I, I, I just, uh, I don't want you to go drive with your, heal with your spell casting because you're kind of a dominant caster too. But I also have weapons. I could, I could swing a sword if I needed to. <laughs> Are you going to come swing a sword, Nikki? I mean, I could. <laughs> I don't want to take away your option to stand in the back and be an emergency <laughs> medic. If I go downhill. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I still have, like, because we just rested, so I've only cast, like, two or three spells and used yeah. some inspiration. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm debating the usefulness of hasting my buddy to Roxy's. <laughs> I killed one! I did my part. You rolled four nat ones, sir. That's on the dice, Scott. Two of those me. were on my <laughs> haste attack. Oh my god, attack. change your dice. Change your dice. I don't care if you just reskin your digital dice, just friggin' change them. Like all of my all of my spells, every single one of them besides mage armor and shield, are concentration. And uh So I'm stuck using uh cantrips to fight. You need to take Warcaster when you get the chance. That's the plan, yeah. But I also want to get my charisma up to twenty. Because it oh, helps so my true. it helps my AC. And yep. by attack bonus, so it's like, ah, what do I take first? Life is rough and everything hurts. It's going to be a while before we get to eight anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have time to think about it. But yeah, I chose very many concentration spells. It's not a bad idea. There's a, there's a reason they require concentrations, because they're all good. Yeah. I only have concentration reaction spells, and then like mage armor and mirror image, which is just like abjuration, protect yourself. Must protect. Yeah. Use your shield of faith. <laughs> I, I just never think of it. And it His takes bonus a bonus action. action. You ain't got to use it on yourself. Better. No, not when he's getting hit. Giant he's getting grappled. Over... I, I agree with him. Giant's fight over. That's one round. That's round one. Yeah, I, I give know. him round I just... one. Round I one, I ancestral fight is getting. <laughs> I'll remember it eventually. Promise. No, you won't. <laughs> what else are you ma maintaining concentration on? My focus on beating the shit out of the enemy and rolling nat ones. Yes, use yours. I can't use mine because if I use mine, then I can't cast any other spells. <laughs> Given. I could just be selfish, like haste myself. <laughs> or uh still the faith myself so just off topic Pathfinder is wild yeah and it, it confused brain hurt because you can make anything whether it's like 
viable or not because there's a whole subclass for the paladin dedicated to being a paladin ranger or a paladin <laughs> archer so as yeah. like you've played it a few times you played it uh i haven't played it pen and paper but uh there are two really good games that are basically like um it's as if you took one of the adventure modules and made an entire game out of it ah gotcha so uh they released one that's path and it's all the same edition rules like it plays like pen and paper Mm -hmm. pathfinder but uh the first one was the kingmaker and the current one that they just released is wrath of the righteous which is uh a crusade against demons that are pouring into into the material plane nice but it's got like classes they copied D &D and they made it better yeah, they're like, what's wrong with D and D? Well, <laughs> the action economy doesn't really make sense, so I'm gonna fix action economy. And so you actually think it's a better system? Um, yes it's, and it's no. crunchier. It's crunchier. So I don't think a lot of people wouldn't want to play it. Right. But for me, for it's, my type of playing style, yeah, it's way better. It's way it's better. It's very mechanical, very crunchy. Like I said, I say the words paladin archer, and that's <laughs> yeah, the class. that's like paladin archer, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a lot. The customization is wild. Like, uh, there are 25 classes. Each one has at least five subclasses. That that's always been the strength of that game. Yeah. Is the options for sure. And it'll completely change the way you play. Like, really? Yeah, subclasses in 5e offer really good differentiation. But the difference between a Divine Hunter Paladin and a Stone Lord Paladin is far and above more different than any oath yeah interesting and then there's even a monk archer class well yeah it's wild hey uh hey mal yep the uh do you mind turning the uh the insect sounds down oh yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) i forgot they were still on yeah just need to hear them crawl I, don't know if I will. Know I will I remove the insect sounds. They were. They were supposed to be gone. I refuse so was, to this, hit my sweet This voice. is some really calming insect noise. I got. I refuse to attack either scorpion. I couldn't do it. Damn it, Nick. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Thanks for that call. Boom. I rolled over his back and hid in the corner because I could not stab it. Even even this giant scorpion rolled a crit on its stinger attack. He's just like my baby boy. <laughs> oh. You couldn't thunder strike him. Oh yeah, Mal, if you ever get tired of being the forever DM, there are D&D video games you can just play. And it's basically the same thing. Like, it's it's the campaign book from start to end. It's a whole really? module. Yeah. Where, where do I find this? Where is this? Uh, It's on Steam. Okay. Okay, which, yeah. yeah. Which game is this, sir? Pathfinder, Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. Oh, that's Pathfinder. Uh, you said, yeah. How does it play? Is it's it like, same a, is it turn-based? It's not is the it same, thing. same It's, <laughs> it's a CRPG, so it's very much, uh, it's actually up to you. There's a turn-based mode and the okay. old style of like Baldur's Gate, like a real time with pause. Got it. And you can f- flip flop between them at will with the press of a button. So like if you're cutting through cheap mobs, cheap enemies, then you can you do- just kinda real time with pause you just let it go but if you're facing more harrowing threats you can slow it down got and it. do turn based which has your your action your swift action your movement like the whole thing got it yeah it's very pen and paper give me a second i think i just turned on the heater So y'all ready to go see the the governor? The governor, mate? Yeah. <laughs> the monarch. Someone has going to, say, to go see him in charge. <laughs> Ooh, I should screen cap that. I'm like, Taroxy, should we break off and go make sure our our, our Furos followers are okay? <laughs> I'm sure they're fine. Alright, so uh, Troy and Nikki, you guys ready? Alright, perfect. Cool. Um, 
So as we pick back up, party standing there successfully, people in cheers have or have died down. Uh, people are kind of whispering. The, the guards have kind of closed off and created a you know a quarter to figure out what's happened here um, in the streets. These two giant dead insectoid creatures are laying there, all splayed out, and there are multiple bodies as well of these returned. And the guards are like returned, we haven't seen. Uh, you know, th these kinds in Akros in a long time. How did they even get in? Um, and it's just kind of like the conversation that people are having around just in awe of this even happening. Uh, I'll turn it back over to you all. Um, still, I like mid, like mid healing uh, Apodexus as he says to him, looks like your vision is coming faster than, than we all thought. I let it be known. Although I wasn't expecting it to happen this quickly. Well, we'll bring that up with bring that up in the meeting. Um, if possible, can we get these scorpions back? I would like to prepare a meal with them, if that's fine, Mother. Kind of turning back over to Artemisia. She looks like, um, sure. Uh, if, if you'd like, if your party would prefer it. Uh, um, she kind of snaps and looks at the guards they kind of look at her like she goes do as do as he asks um and they start kind of pull their short swords and start hacking <laughs> away legs and pieces and they're just like dismembering these creatures and stacking the the the, the body parts uh, uh you know we don't need all this it's, most of this is gonna go to waste right uh, one of them complains she's just like mm -mm, be quiet just do it <laughs> and they do what you're told yeah, and they uh, um, they all start working on that. So um, yeah, and uh, so does the party just decide to kind of head back off or look more at these the or inspect uh, can, more, investigate more? Can we look around and see if there was like a clear way that they got in? They like burrow up from the ground. Did was there like a door ajar? Are there footprints? Um, as you look around, Fitz, uh, you want to give me an investigation check? Also, I think Epidexus would look, need to investigate the interior of the mask to see if there's any that have any writing inside of them. Mm -hmm. A 22. Ooh. So while you don't see, you see the footprints from down the road they came, you you do feel like with that 22 you could track those footprints back to where they came from but they continue to kind of go down the the kind of dusty street it's not very windy today so some of those tracks are there there are some cross track from traffic it's not the greatest but you feel like you might be able to find a general direction um you know you get you get a feel for where they came from you might be able to track it and then outside of that what you also notice fits is that the garments that they're wearing are they're darkened kind of burgundy but as you look down some of them are stained in a you know you've been with this party enough before this fits you probably you know with all the bloodshed that you've seen from the arena to now you know what dried blood looks like um and some of the cloaks these cloaks of perforos are stained with blood not the blood like before they were hacked up because the blood that comes out of these return is more like very dark uh, and and like dries very black. Whereas the other stains you could tell is more human or humanoid blood. Uh, on the insides of the masks, uh, Apodexes, you don't, they're all kind of clear like the other three you have in your pocket. And none of those have any scribings or markings on them at all. And whatever was held by the leader evaporated? Uh, yes, just evaporated into those, into that. Um... It's will kind of elbow 
apodexis and point out the tracks that she sees and say like, oh gosh, I mean, we got this big important meeting that we kind of elbowed our way into, but I know you're really good with, with like, looking for things and things. And I saw those, so I thought I'd show you. So there they are. Clearly they were disguised themselves, so clearly the the smocks or the, the, their war may have came from Perforos followers. Um, and so yes, you guys have kind of, there is this lead to where they came from or kind of staying with the, the focus of where we're at. And uh, I will go to Artemisia and, and ask uh, Madam, is, is this the only way that there's an approach to where the meeting is? Is it possible there are others that are trying to sneak in? Well, it does appear that they were on their way. They were marching in that direction. Um, maybe we should make, uh, if we make haste, we can make it there to, I think we have thwarted the threat, uh, but if you suggest we move quickly, then yeah, I, I am with you. I trust your judgment here. Well, it didn't seem like we were the targets, although we certainly fought. I do agree with you. Let us go then. Um, and so as you all head away, um, now that now collecting all those masks is going to get pretty heavy. Uh, I imagine you're probably encumbered at this point, uh, Apo. Do you? Uh, I mean, you could take them back to the house and store them later, but right now you're literally literally your capacity with all these like giant masks. Like you pretty much probably hold a couple under your your arms. Um, we move forward and. Uh, as you march up this long winding hill uh, with these beautiful statues uh, uh, that that represent the strength and the might, the military might of Akros. You can see all of the valley out on one side. Uh, you can see all of the city below you. Um, even stretching out, you can see the sea off in the distance and see the small little melitus from this, from this vantage point. Um, and to another side, a huge canyon or a gorge uh, and all where you can, um, where, you know, there, where the valley drops below a uh, hundred, maybe thousands of feet. And ahead of you is this huge structure, uh, with this ionic columns standing, you, you go up these flight of like 60, 60, you know, 60 feet worth of stairs leading to a landing where along the way you check in with multiple checkpoints and, uh, with each point. Artemisia shows her House of Christos uh, um, symbol. And we kind of pass on and kind of swipe pan and, and, and open up as you all are waiting in this large round room with, co with columns all around. Uh, it's open air, so it's open so like at the top. Uh, actually it's square shaped, but it's it's open so that you can see the, the, the valley below. Um, on, on like on four on three sides and the side you walked in is kind of uh so you have this beautiful panoramic view um and then in walks uh, tyrannic tyrannica and she is um a uh earthy skinned woman like, a, like an olive tone her black hair is braided and runs almost the length, runs all the way down to almost like her beginning of her thigh. Um, she is dressed very uh, in, in a in a way that symbolizes her power and strength, almost like a Caesar would or breastplate. But she still wears kind of like a military garb. She does not have her helmet. She doesn't have a shield or any weapons. She does keep like you can see a dagger on her hip, and she definitely comes in well armed with guards. Her physical um, structure is, 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 is strength. Um, she walks in and she says, uh, Artemisia and, and Artemisia says, thank you, Tanika for, uh, for granting me this, granting me your audience. 
I hope you don't mind. I have brought the group that I wanted to talk to you, talk with you about. Um, she says, yes, I am willing to hear. Come, come, sit. And uh, there is a, towards like an opening where, that towards where you can kind of see all that at the end of the, the hall, there's enough of a, a decent like table. It's a comfortable sitting. It's not a banquet table, but it's like a, some chairs, some small tables. Um, water is brought and wine is brought just in case anybody wants it. And she goes, carry And after they're making some small chit chat, Tyrannica leans forward and goes, tell me what is on your mind. And uh, at that point, I imagine that uh, Aramisia kind of we the story that we all know she shares with her and kind of brings her up to speed and uh when she's done Tyrannica just sits back and hmm, thinks she looks at all of you interesting and she's like told her about you know what she thinks that happened with the horde the fact that Thraxes is alive all of this Penthos wasn't really him that's what happened in the arena the shame that was brought to House Christos bronze bullies all of it she looks over to Proxenos and looks over to the group says what might you add the rest of you Uh, <laughs> if nothing yes. giving like a kind of like deep breath in and then out mm -hmm. I am sure that you're well in, well aware that there was a returned attack not not too long ago at I the heard front about, gates yes and I and, and yes, that would have been talked about as well. And so she's um when you bring that up, um because A, yeah, I kind of like role played that a little wrong, but I imagine that like that would have been one of the first things, like as you guys shared what just happened and how you were almost thwarted on the way here, and that those um uh, those you know figures tried to come up. And uh and you also have noticed there is more of a doubling of there's been a double down of like security around the the, the palace or the structure so you've automatically seen that um, but she says yes uh, I am glad you were there uh, I'm sure our military would have taken care of it as well but uh, you've proven to be quite resourceful this group um, and I'm glad you are here um, so I am more concerned that yes, a few a few returned got into our got into our city. But I am even more concerned that this dragon is out here. Has Apple shared the idea of the returned? And if not, would he share more on that? Um, Proxenos was going to lead into that if oh, Apple yeah, wasn't so going to step passing. in. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, he would have explained to Tyrannica that what he had seen on the shores of the underworld and how he was just there and watching as they marched. And that's the issue that um, is plaguing him, is the fact that he doesn't know where they're going to come out from but he knows this army has amassed and they're coming up I have an insight check from Proxenos and uh, Apodexis insight um, that is a uh, 20 15 yeah. hmm. and so she kind of kind of turns her eyes and in that brief little flutter, just from looking at Apo, the Leonin, to turning to look at towards Proxenos, um, you can tell that that made her very uncomfortable and that there was something Proxenos can see that she was shocked, almost like, almost like, you know, you were able to read something in there. Um, almost like she believes what Apple is saying. So 
You believe this as well, Proxenos? And looking, looking like kind of like squinting a little bit as like reading her expression and then returning to fa- like normal face as he says, I have seen visions and I am close to the that side. I believe that this is going to be a grave issue. I believe you, but she looks to Artemisia. Can I speak frankly? I, and Artemisia nods. She looks at Proxy and she goes, I trust your mother, but we also trusted your father. And now you're telling me he's a dragon. And I also saw you with the darkness of Erebos hovering over you. And even now I can feel the 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 chill of death near you. How can this makes me uneasy? What part is Erebos playing in this? And why is he seeming to have, to have chosen you? I was just going to side glance. <laughs> Proxenos, like. Artemisia looks intense. very uncomfortable. Looks over like at, at Proxenos, like, you know. <laughs> I understand. I. This is a lot to absorb. Um, I would actually step up say I understand your misgivings but Proxenos didn't choose that burden excuse me if I'm speaking out of turn but speak freely was, that's what this is for he was just as surprised as we were and I think the part that Erebos has to play has yet to be determined but I think we have shown our goodwill towards the city and hope that we are counted as the city's friends and allies. Advantage persuasion check, Pythias. Okay. Okie dokie. 26. Ooh, she got a nat 20. So you, uh, Good roll. <laughs> and she looks long and hard at the um, the Triton. Leans in a bit. Starts to scan, looking at Taroxys, looking at strength, looking at Fitz. She looks back at Pythias and she says, I apologize for my doubting. You have to understand she kind of drops her guard for a bit, kind of leans back for the first time, looking a bit comfortable. It has been tough to hold things together with my father and mother being missing. And um, frankly, I have no problem with what you ask uh, as Artemisia rolled it out. The gold you found is yours and if you need more, we will, we can always discuss further, but we appreciate the offering. Uh, if that is as it stands of you allowing 
us to rebuild and use that, especially if we believe that we may have a war on our hands with returned, um, that will count. Um, as Artemisia said, you all have a friend here, you have a house here. And the fact that the temple, I believe that uh, it is good to get it under construction and she's looking to Taroxy's and bring it back to its glory. I, uh, Perforos is fickle and I can't help but believe that this is an era, if he is shining light on you, then hopefully that light continues to shine. Hopefully uh, he does not, hopefully that is a good age for us where he does not change his mind and because we do not want to be destroyed under the under the fire of the volcano. Um, and, uh, and to be honest, I too have been having dreams that my father, Akron, comes to me riding a great steed of light made out of the Nyx stars. And he tells me to be weary um, to seek out a palace at the edge of the world he tells me my mother's there and then at the end of the dream he is we are on a great battlefield as he is swarmed by thousands of returned but, he is, but they are fighting back with a thousand strong or thousand strong of, of, uh, of Akron soldiers. And I wake up and I have had that dream yeah. once a night each for the past several weeks. Yes. Can I gleam anything from, from that? Like the temple that's in the insight um is there anything i've heard of it like um history wise or anything like that or would that be an insight give me history if you uh nat 20 for 26 okay and so You have, uh, whether it's something you've read or heard about, maybe it's come to you in a dream. Maybe it's something you saw in the darkness when you were down for a second there before um, Erebos intervened at the games. You see this, uh, this beautiful white stone city or palace um, on a rock and as far as the eye can see there is like a land of water just a waterfall and this structure is built in to the side um, and for some reason you You think of you think of that mask, the first mask uh, that you sold to the merchant, uh, the returned mer the the old, the old man, the merchant on the road, and the name Phoenix rolls through your mind. Um, Something about that temple has something to do with Phoenix. A temple, white stone on a rock in a huge body of water. A 
great fall, a great waterfall by it. I, too, have seen this dream, but at the end of it, is that a war? I see. old man, that merchant who we sold the mask to. And a single name was whispered into my ear. Phoenix. I believe the dream is telling me. I believe that my father is telling me to, to that if someone goes there, that my mother is still alive. Maybe, maybe you can help me with this. And with that 26, uh, you got a 26, so I'm going to give you, give me an, you get, that was a history check, so give me an insight, uh, give me a, yeah, give me, give me a religion, an advantage religion, Fraxinos. All right. That is a 13. And um, so, yeah, they just sit there and you're like, you almost feel like something inside of you is telling you something. You know, that every time that feeling, you feel like you get a little intuition or like a little voice. But unlike when it's very clear, you can't hear the voice. You don't know what the voice is trying to tell you. You've, you're uncomfortable to some degree, uh, but you can't make it out. As this whole conversation is happening, I wonder what others, you know, some of the other party members, Fitz, Sin, Troxies, Telmoon, might be thinking, even if they're not, even if they're not talking or sharing. Um, and you do get the feeling that at this point, now that she trusts you, she's actually asking you to take on this. Um, if you if you do, if you are willing to go, she, you know, you could tell that it might be going down that road that you, and she has the power to give you what you need. Um, yeah, for the right price, and as long as she tells the story, it seems like uh, something that would bring us glory. I love it. Well, gosh, we were about to go f hunt down like a fleece mean fleece to make a bag of holding so we could make our journey a little easier. You don't buy any chance to have one of those lying around, do you? <laughs> oh, my love. Uh, those are... Wow, I know you're, they're you're really uncommon. To... <laughs> Yeah, that's, I just thought you said you could give us some stuff to make it easier. I thought that would make it easier. You know, sure. the answers always know if you never ask. <laughs> Understood. And I, you're always welcome to ask. I, listen, I, and then she, she kind of like, because there's something about Akros where, you know, they're not the most superstitious people, right? And so she could tell that she's getting really kind of emotional and she's getting into this whole magic thing. And she's like, listen, these are just dreams. Um, if you want to check it out, you can. It is, there's no rush. <laughs> Who am I to think my mother's somewhere alive at the edge of the world? So do do not do not think twice about this, Proxinos. I am, if you find yourself with some downtime, maybe. You had my ear at this idea of these, these returned armies and to think that we saw these, cre these creatures rolling. And then Artemisia speaks up, she goes, one thing I did notice watching the fight, watching these heroes, these champions, that they have definitely proven that the gods are with them, um, Tyrannica. But I noticed that I've always heard 
that in Odunos, that the murder king has roaming hordes of very violent and vigilant uh, returned. Many of those returned are those who came back who were soldiers, who were, who were killers. I did not see that in these returned. They were weak, they were feeble. And the, the one who led them seemed to be controlling them or, I don't know, I got the feeling that they were being promised something. So, I don't know, I don't, maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but I, don't, I didn't see, at least down there, an army or the makings of an army. Uh, hmm. But I still do wonder how they got in. She's quiet again. Yes, don't 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 worry about this. If 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 you have other things, other obligations, handle them. I will be here. Um, and you have you you don't even need to set a meeting with me. If you do decide, I will set you up with a um, with someone who can give you everything that you need uh, when that time comes. Uh, looking over at my companions again, um, their gear clearly showing um, wear and tear. Hey, I did my best. I, I know you did, but it... <laughs> it's not, it's, you know, it's not pristine. We, you know. Um... Is it possible Got if it, my Tomo. companions here also get some gear they have worn out from, they have worn some of it out from the... Yes, various we're, fights. Um, we're happy to replace your armor. Uh, though you are rich, you are definitely rich people. Um, uh, and so, yes, we can make that accommodation for you. Um, I'm sorry that I, can't, looking at Fitz, cannot provide a fleece mane, ram, or lion. Though, um, if you believe, kind of, maybe you mentioned or something, but if you believe that they are out there, then... I mean, they are believed to be out uh, in those wilds up in the mountains. So I believe that you can, as so far as I've seen, seeing you all, from what I hear about you all in action and from the from the games is that there's nothing you all can't do that you don't put, that you put your mind to, especially being blessed by the gods. Oh yes, ma'am. We're quite capable, ma'am. Oh, totally. <laughs> and we had- she smiles. Fitz, we had- tentative plans that maybe we would head out and have a hunt and head it's towards the mountain. frivolous. You know, the only thing that's like a hard set plan is I had ordered some things from the market. They're not going to be done for another like six days or so. So that's well, my No one thing. is asking you to leave on a ship tonight. <laughs> Again. You know, some things require urgency, ma'am. We are, like I said, very capable, ma'am. I, I am... I am taken by the fact that you believe this, that you are taking my dream with such urgency. I do appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, breaking for a moment, yes, she's, the urgency would depend on you finding it urgent. Um, yeah. So don't think, and, and yeah. at the same time, a journey, you're going to have to have time to prep. Like you're going to have to yeah. have, uh, so it's not going to be, you're not like hopping on a ship or you literally would have to, you know, head down to the coast anyway yeah. so yeah i mean it this is one of those things that you could say yes to and decide and tell her hey yes we will do this but we won't do it for this time is that okay yeah. or we're going to do this immediately we're going to drop everything yeah. and start prepping for that it's up to you or you can go because you know you can still go back to the other million things that you guys are working on um you got another side question. i think those priorities kind of depend on how much she's willing to help us you know like yeah. if if she wants us to make it a priority then yeah. maybe a bit of a subsidy to help us. We want appropriately. official state 
patronage of the temple. Yeah, and remember, these are also you are also looking at a lot of things that are in general in the same general direction. So some of the things that Taroxes and Telmoon want to probably accomplish are going to be up towards the mountain. Sure. Uh, many of the things like going towards the sea would be, you know, Fitz wants to stop by. She may want to go and see the artist. That could be on the way there. So there there are multiple things that could be. Accomplished. Which way is the, the drug gang shakedown? That's towards more Satessa, which is still south. Mm. You can head down, the, but but okay. heading, you're kind of passing Satessa to go towards the towards the wooded area. And where's Goodness. the shady shady Phoenix Temple? The shady Phoenix Temple is is going to be in a body of water at the, the end. Of the body of water, so just out towards the sea, towards the Siren Sea. We're and... going to zigzag somehow <laughs> through yeah. all this. See you in the Indiana check Jones everything map. off the list. Yeah. Start can somebody put a map down so we can start drawing a line through this? <laughs> you can you're, you can pull up, uh, you know. Uh, can we get one of those remember. FedEx hub things? We start, <laughs> yeah. we restock, we go. Oh. oh, we can do this. We just need to put not our demands, our requests on the table, yeah. as it were. Okay, so what, what are your requests? Oh, uh, Taroxes, uh, from a story perspective, wants state patronage of the temple. Mm -hmm. Like the Akroan state to acknowledge it and like, it's not like you have to go to that temple specifically, but like right. a royal visit you pretty much with want to a bring rich back entourage. The yeah. Kind of bring, reinstate the, yeah. the... And it doesn't even necessarily need to be the old flame speaker order. No. You know, Taroxes no. doesn't He's not exactly a traditionalist. He's not old. Right. So, like, if they want to make their own modern flame speaker order, I'm sure Taroxes probably wouldn't have been like a big fan of how the old flame speakers worked anyway. Yeah. But like a, a newer order, a new denomination yeah. of. And they like, mention possibly fearing Perforos might be a little fickle. If that's the case, then why not lean on the side of caution? But yeah, hmm. Taroxes thinks a royal visit to the temple. And like bringing an entourage of people who would donate, because he's like, put build a temple up and a royal visit, giving it legitimacy, would be a big step in that direction. Well, this time he's back in a racket with Josh, man. Now we need donations, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All temples need donations. It's not like we're making money. It's not a profitable business model. <laughs> and at that moment, there's a little statue like off in the corner, like on a pedestal, and it's a statue of Iroas, and um, your little owl. <laughs> like flies over and lands on the statue of Iros and starts pecking pe 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 like pecking <laughs> in yeah. the top of Iros the statue. Hey yo my dude that's his owl. <laughs> that's his owl. Um and Taroxes gives the, the owl a slow <laughs> wink. And he kind of stops it and winks back. <laughs> um I'll get a how about a persuasion check from both of you? One check, and I'll take the take the highest. Oh, of you two. It's gonna be our charisma. Yeah, character. very persuasive. Yeah, no, it's all right. So it's all right, Taraxi. That's why I talked with you. <laughs> I got a twelve. Okay. I got a twenty-four. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um. Well, I think that could that could be done. Um. We have to consider. Uh, I, I can put you in, in touch with, I can have that a part of talk to my council. Maybe we can put a, we provide the patronage. We can uh, put a perforous day on the calendar. Uh, have us have a festive celebration. Um, provide a little bit more coverage of the God uh, throughout Akros. Provided I don't get any uh, omens from Iroas uh, or Heliot. Uh, but I am fine with that. And uh, so far, I see none. Axel's looking over to the rest <laughs> of the party if they have anything else. And I'll say in my case. <laughs> did, we, did we talk about the gold? Yeah. We did talk about the gold. Unless well, you yeah, gold was implied, the gold we have is ours, and the rest of the gold is theirs. It's yeah, yeah, what we, we've it's talked split about. between. Is that, is that what we decided? And she mentioned it's... something about if we need money later, it's negotiable. Yeah, 
and I'm also trying to negotiate a, 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 a government subsidy. You guys have purchases. enough gold not to run out for an entire deed. But yeah, we, if we are going no, we to spend, uh, we can spend this gold. Maybe anywhere, not with this group. Who knows? Right? We can spend I can this make gold this gold disappear market. in an hour. <laughs> in any market, we can spend this gold. If we're going yeah. to destroy the spend economy it here, yeah. maybe the economy, maybe the government might, you know, give us a discount here and there for choosing about- to spend the bulk of it here. What so. about Taroxes? T- t- weren't you talking about that that group of uh, uh, portal things? Did you wanna? Were we talking about maybe suggesting that like a network of portals? I'm a, and she and like Artemisia leans over and goes, um, "I've already put some contacts out and working on that." But remember, oh, we fantastic. discussed. And she goes, "Remember, we discussed the." If we head up to this oracle that you left up there, if there's any living flame speakers, then we could easily establish without uh, without much waiting. Um, so, so just just something, but we're working on it. And it's she's kind of just letting you know that's something service. that 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 we're gonna get done regardless of Tyrannica or not. You are Amisha. You're so fabulous. <laughs> Y'all trying to commercialize my god's powers right now? Is that what no, I'm we hearing? just want easy <laughs> teleportation throughout it's all of the world. Uh huh. For for ourselves personally, so that we could go worship our god, or so that we could uh, <laughs> maybe make some deliveries faster and get a little bit more money. <laughs> you Why know not what? Both? Why not both? Help us, help you. <laughs> yeah. I I just need to know if y'all try to commercialize my my church or not. It's not (laughs) commercial if it's a personal activity. We out here hustling. I will happily get high on worship and fairy dust. Fitz out here trying to put a new fairy dust or pixie dust network going through. (laughs) You know, that might be. You know, we don't have to talk about that here, you know, in front of all the authority figures. That's fine. If you want to get technical, it's not commercial it's because the ba- the temple is also our home base it is also within the legalese just us transporting personal possessions with us wherever we're going <laughs> with the mercantile intent Proxel's coughs over <laughs> this this crazy conversation <laughs> between them I think that wraps it wraps it up yes I have many things to do today I Thank you for being my first meeting of the morning and good uh, good job down there handling, taking out the trash. Anytime. We're great at that. Thank you so much for seeing us, Tyrannica. And Fitz gives like the most elaborate bow she can think <laughs> of. And she, um, and she kind of just nods down and she says, uh, well, thank you. Um, I am, it's hard for me to still see myself as uh, standing ruler of all of Acro, so I still have not gotten used to uh, the bowing, but um, stand. Uh, well, I will see you to the rest of your day. Uh, Godspeed and may all the, may the gods uh, be with you where you go from here. Um, and please, uh, if you do decide to take on my, or when you decide to take on it, uh, send a, or have Artemisia send a message to let me know. I can't say that I will always be this accessible. Uh, I could just talk right into your brain. Just tell you right <laughs> to your brain. <laughs> there you go. Um, I would... And then uh, she says, my, my mage advisors would probably advise against, but yeah, depending on how far you are from. I'm pretty sure it's unlimited. Oh, sure. okay. I could, I could talk to you. Yeah, we can, we can chat sometimes. I'll try to make sure to turn off my brain sometime. We'll let you know <laughs> if we find your mom, when, when we find your mom, we'll just keep you in the loop. That, that would be, that would be preferable. Lady Thank you. Proxenus gives a nod. Um, and we move on from there and pick up with you all marching Who wants down. Scorpion. Yeah. And <laughs> you guys are at the yeah. bottom of the hill leading back into Akros on your way back to Christo, House Christos, when you hear him say that. Um, 
Yeah, and yeah, and... Tillman's actually going to try to hit the market real quick, try to get a horse, and try to catch up to the Perforos believers. Okay, that are walking because it seems like there's a group that's actually walking to the temple. No, right they now. were all. They oh, they're were all, all coming. So they're, yeah, unless you followed them, them back, they were all. There were like eleven of them. They were all um, returned. Dang, we ain't got no no worshippers. You just gonna make fun of us like that? <laughs> well, you until you. I mean, you could go back to the the Perforos Temple. That's not. These are just people that were walking through the streets. So oh, I thought they were going. Was, to, I thought they were going to the Perforos Temple. They, they may have been, or they may have been coming from. But either way, you guys haven't checked back in. So if you're saying you're checking back in with the Perforos Temple, you may be able to go find some information or talk to them about what was going on or, were you I'm talking sure. about the priests we met at the tiny shrine yes remember the yeah. priests you met at the tiny temple so i think what i was trying to make the connections earlier is those i i would have thought maybe i didn't make the, i would have thought that taroxy's probably thought those were either newly acquired or uh perforos worshipers before he's before he knew something was off so <sighs> fitz picked up on a trail leading down the street so who knows where they came from Maybe they came from there, or maybe they were headed to the. So I would say the direction, if Troxys knows the direction of the city, it's the 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 feet came. They would be going in that general direction. Now they're not like right down the road, but it's in that general direction. Yeah. Probably some fifteen twenty blocks. Probably quick short rest, skipping dinner, go investigate because this is crazy. <laughs> so um, if there's anything, so. You guys are going to investigate there. Uh, is everyone going there? If everyone's going, it sounds like Proxinos is ready to get back and get some good cooking going. Are you going to cook Proxinos or? Um, how, let me know how how good can I cook? To cook. It all I'd, tastes the same to me. Yeah, I, I think you cooked the, the first time for the party. <laughs> um, did the party enjoy it? I, I uh, and so. Probably. Um, my boy made good. some bread and cut up some fruit. I don't know about his his <laughs> his giant scorpion skills, but yeah. T- sorry, Tellmoon's not not gonna be there for dinner. Yeah. Tellmoon's getting out of here, so Tellmoon will be that. leaving the city tonight. All right, just heads up. It's gonna take me a few days. You're Tell gonna go. You're gonna, gonna be here. heading up to the to the temple. Yeah, we got to start. Yeah. 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 Stuff. Not because he's a good investigator, but because he's great moral support. That makes sense. So, dinner. Can I, I get a, for a couple other? Yeah, everyone else there too. Because Troy, did you say you were doing something else? I'm going with them. Okay. Play it. Yeah. I'm gonna treat Dan these next few days almost kind of montage. You, we're gonna kind of like go through these next uh, few days. So okay. you said you're tired. You're going to rest, Zen. No, I'm tired of the city, so I'm going with. Oh, you're there. going. God, just okay. to get out. <laughs> yeah. And I feel I, like I I'm being caged. Yeah. I would have split off and and said. To whoever's left, which I guess, oh, we have Apodexis, Fitz, Proxenes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I need some time to center myself. It's been a strange time, but but I'll try to meet you for dinner. All right. And I will actually go to the location that you mentioned, though. Yes. So Pythias heads off. Everyone going in. Uh, separate directions. Um, What's Apo doing? Oh, Apo, yeah. He's staying near Proxenos, but if there's a place in House Christos where he can just kind of like meditate and see if maybe he can commune with Erebos about what to do next. Okay. So we kind of move ahead that night and um, we we do see uh we do see um you guys having that that uh proxinos and apple having this dinner these huge you know almost like lobster like tearing off these pieces and and or, or, or you know, like there's unless you want to describe how you presented it but i imagine it was like almost like these lobster style uh huge chunks of meat that you guys are are eating um and then and later on dipped in butter all dipped that. in butter all of it um other people in the house of crystals are there it's so much that uh there's a line outside of new soldiers and because of this meal too some of them are like uh, like you could tell that like this guys outside talking about it like 
and he was like, hey, you know, security guy's like, we ain't worse on the on the road in the military. This has got to let's try it. Um, and they're all eating, and then some of them are like, Artemis is talking about them, and they're like, kind of enrolling and signing up to work for the house uh, as like guards and such. Later on, Apo is sitting there, kind of meditating, listening. Um, can I have a religion check, Apo? Proxima is in the background with the apron and the chef hat on. And is there Ooh. anything specifically you'd be five. asking of Erebos? Anything in your prayers that you're asking for? Well, with a five, may not be much, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, let me see. Uh, like, if there's a specific question you want answered or something like that, feel free to ask it. Maybe, maybe because it's low, maybe, maybe it will come, but maybe it won't come as fast as you expect. I, I think he would really ask. Not from not the bigger question of why they're why they're there, but more of like the where did the group that attacked come from? Nice. We then move to um, Pythias is traveling down the side of this mountain. He can hear the trickling of water. It's in the dark. He's getting closer to his meeting point. Um, does light, does, do you use a torch at night or do you, are you dark vision? Do Trines have dark vision? No, no, I'm, I'm talking Pythias. Pythias is there. using uh, some his dark vision. Uh, Fitz has maybe gone to check. The lady's like, I'm almost there. It's like halfway through the week. She's like, I'm getting there. And she shows you some of the progress that is being made. Um, Pythias, you uh, uh, meet with your, um, a day goes by and you meet with your, you camp out there. Your contact shows. Um, it comes out of like, from under like a, the waterfall's not as large as it used to be. It's kind of like, but it's still pouring. And he kind of steps through. He's got a wider mouth and he kind of talks like this. And he goes, sir, glad you made it. Um, much to the report. How are things here on land? Things are not great. There was a attack just the other day. Uh, looked like it was maybe attacking the monarch of the city. But we were this group of people that I have gotten involved with. Uh, we managed to thwart it. Good. I'm glad you are well, brother. I have to report on the mask uh, on the. Um, the information you gave us about your road, your trip here to Akros. Um, yes. There is our, um, he kind of talks about, and I don't necessarily right now know like the certain levels, but within your kind of kingdom and your world, there are certain high priests and, and, and mages and within the society and under the water. And there's been talk of because like Thassa kind of hears all and the rippling through the waves, there's been talk that of, it's not the mass that you, or that you talked about, but there's been talk about two or three masks that have, um, that have scrawlings on the inside of them, that have information uh, of followers of Phoenix who made it back, who basically returned, who as they were losing their memory, uh, carved everything that they could of what they learned while they were in the underworld. What he shares is that this information, it tells kind of the story that Phoenix, before he died, before he became the first returned god, as a man had a had had a uh, a purpose a quest um and he goes don't lose your gills on this but so phoenix this god of deception uh, you know mostly i've always seen him as a jokester trickster it's the, the lore that we found says that he was originally meant to free the Titans from the depths of the underworld. And that 
the humans who wanted this not the humanoids who who would do everything to stop him murdered him and sent him to the underworld <laughs> funny tricks on them because now he was actually closer to completing his goal but he did not remember it but he found his way out the first returned and when he exited he ascended to godhood some even say more of a lore but some even say that Erebos himself rather let him out of the underworld than to let him remember his purpose while he was so close to com being to completing it and so these masks we believe that these three returned living or dead hold those secrets hold the hold not only the understanding of phoenix now knowing that but the actual information on how he could bring about the titans you see how this is all terrifying right Eat. so there's that and Thassa is she's mad as fuck <laughs> can it what now up. Uh, Thassa's really upset. She's, um, uh, the seas are terrible right now. Storms and Karanos is probably aiding with her anger. Um, someone stole her bite it. And, um, she's, she's vowed to, um, bring a drought on all of the humanoids across Theros until her bite is found. So, yeah. Shit's not quite good on the waters or on land, is it? Our own lady is a bit upset at us, uh, so. But for the most part, the Tritons are fine. Well, that is in character. When people encroach on her domain, she has a reputation for getting very angry. Yes. So I don't know what you will do with that information. Um, who knows? Uh, no, and I'll say one thing. <sighs> also, we've heard that if this information is out there, then it's quite likely that Erebos is hunting anyone with such information to keep it out of Phoenix's hands. Probably, knowing Erebos, he'd probably kill off anyone who's even talking about it. But, um, you know, the gods, little gods, they're not looking at us. Kind of like puffs his gills out, his frills, shakes off some water. These masks that were found, they were destroyed, right? We don't want that information. Oh, we actually don't have any of them. We just believe that the inf we know that there are the masks. I don't know where they're at. Um, because I believe you gave him a mask, right? You gave him yes. a returned mask. It was not the returned mask with the scrawling because Apple sewed that one. So, <laughs> so that one is gone somewhere, whether it's whoever, you know, whether that merchant has it, it's floating around. Um, so now that's all starting to kind of connect. Uh, and you would say having these possessing masks of the returned is likely to put a target on someone's back as well if you were Erebos and you knew that uh, information like that was possibly going to get back to Phoenix maybe you try to stop them I, I'm just that's all conjecture I don't know uh, but uh, that's my report and uh, I've been sitting out here long enough. You, do you mind? Uh, you want to sit in, in, in share a meal? He kind of like sits down. You mind sticking around for a little bit with me? Oh, certainly. Yes, you've, I'm sure you've made a long journey here. Yeah. And so he just kind of like slops down and he pulls out his like 
his bag and he pulls out this um because he just came out of the water this like small squid and he kind of just he kind of like he pulls out one and he hands you one and he just calls, and he starts like, eating the thing while it's writhing <laughs> like the tentacles he just starts like sucking it down uh it's just... right <laughs> um as we move from there we then uh kind of pick up on the journey outside of the city to Roxy's and tell moon some days go by maybe that was that one part you've now gone back maybe to the city Pythias, uh, within the next few days, tell me about what you would be doing up at your at your temple. Um, well, I mean, we probably would have started again talking to the priest that Taroxy found first, right? We caught up to them. Or did they, they let? Oh, I yeah. Mean, so on the way there. Like investigating whatever yep. happened. So on the, guys, on yeah. the way there, you would come across uh, after the second day. Uh, in the morning, you you come across the burned out shell of the the three story tower of the Flame Speakers. Um, you remember, you have to climb to the top, right? And uh, oh, so we you, didn't learn we, anything from following where the return come from. Oh, sorry, I, I'm jumping ahead because you guys said you guys were leaving the city. Yeah, first, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna so I gotta we're gonna look at that first. Back. Yeah, and then so first thing, yes, yeah, so, so many so many different <laughs> so many different uh, plot threads here. So when you, we're going to rewind back to where you show up and you end up seeing the, the, the man and the, the wife who work the temple. And they're happy to see you. And they, um, when you show up, you notice that there are about eight or nine people there like gathering things. And you can see that people are already kind of making short little pilgrimages outside, knowing that the temple is open, maybe just going up to kind of offer their incense or to do their kind of rituals. Uh, but there's a few people there gathering that morning. Um, and as you, oh, it's good to see you. You know, they start to ask you kind of, the, you kind of get past some of the chit chat. What are some of the questions? What are some of the things you ask them? I mean, charisma's high, but I'm not you really got that, this. Big, that much of a people person. It's more just uh, <laughs> letting them know, hey, like, there's been a bunch of revenants in the city dressed in perforous garb. Really? And uh, when, when was this? And, and when you speak back to it happening that morning, yep. the older man says, um, that is strange. I had just, I just outfitted. We had just, you tell me, yeah, we had just, we were giving out these, he shows the garments, we're giving out these garments for those to leave, and there was a small group of travelers that had just taken their things um, and headed off, uh, headed off down the way. Um, it was actually that the evening before, so they were going to head out in the morning, but they, we had outfitted them the night before. That's quite strange if you said these were returned. Um, let me have a... From you, tell Moon. If it ain't charisma based, it's not happening. <laughs> charisma index is what I got. <laughs> Wait one second here. Um, give me a perception check. Alrighty. Oh, this right that is holding rolling pretty hot to seventeen. Um. So as you're listening to this story and they're kind of, they're starting to like, you know, yammer on and on. It's starting to sound like wah, 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 wah. But in your mind, you're like looking around, you're standing in the entrance of this small temple and you realize you're in a kind of a block, a section of the city that is very open. And there are temples all around you, like some to, so these are smaller temples, like where people can kind of walk up and walk inside small roofs over the head. Um, and you can't help but notice um, that uh, there is off to the side in the same area, maybe 40, 50 feet away, um, that there is a temple to Erebos uh, nearby. And um, the people came at night. Uh, and so you wonder maybe if they know more about where the people went next or if they saw them last or you know if is there anything else that uh that you might ask of this lady as you're and that's just from their perception um yeah um i mean i think uh 
Toma would, seeing that, he would talk to turn around to Zen and Taroxes. That's where Telmoon, knowing that they didn't have masks when they showed up, like these guys were obviously ambushed, killed. I don't really care that much anymore. I just kind of wanted to make sure that it, it wasn't like the whole population of our church that got killed. But Taroxes or Zen think this is something we should research. Taroxes, can I have an insight check? Sure can. And so this is, um, you guys, it was in the morning. So this is probably in the middle because we're on that first day right after that morning you killed and went up, you saw. So it's probably like, we're probably going in an afternoon. Like this is before Proxenos is going back to the house to cook. So he hasn't even finished cooking his scar- scorpion yet. So it's maybe like three in the afternoon. Got a 14. Okay. So Troxy's is your look at, Tell Moon's kind of like maybe give you the eye, like maybe this is nothing uh, across the way at the temple where um, where the Erebos temple is, a little old lady comes to the door. Um, she's not old, she's not haggish. She's just, you know, maybe middle-aged. Um, looks like uh, long hair, but kind of done up and kept. She's wearing very dark black shroud- shrouds, but not uncommon. She is probably the same thing, the keeper of the Erebos temple. And she sweeps, and as she sweeps, she kind of looks up gives a little smile to you both and the and the people and they kind of wave back and then she goes back inside uh but Taroxy's felt something slightly off about her smirk but maybe it's also just Erebus worshipers they're creepy Elman, I don't like the cut of that lady's jib did we stop the old lady <laughs> The option is on the table. Let's go aggressively say hello. Come on. Zen, would you like to aggressively say hello with us? I mean, I, I, I guess. I don't know about killing someone, but I mean... Got it. Attacks. Let's go. So, uh, yeah, we'll go, uh, I guess, knock on the door and... Aggressively. Aggressively. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, most of the temples don't even have... They have kind of archways and they're just open, right? So you just walk in. Um, and inside it's temple slightly larger. It's about 35 feet like radius. It's circular. Um, there are no pillars, but at the end of this, you know, 35 foot at the end of the one side from where you're standing, the ceilings only go up to, uh, maybe it's about, it's about, they're still, they're pretty, pretty high, maybe 12 foot ceiling, slightly domed so that it might make go up a little bit more, 14, 15 feet in the, in the top. And at the end, there is this like eight foot statue of one depiction of Erebos as a very frail man. This one doesn't have, it lacks the horns on his hands are out kind of. uh, And then there is an altar with, and as you all around the room, there are like candles, just multiple candles lighting, even in the daytime here. And it's dark, even though it's daylight outside, it's dark in here. There's no, there's no, you know, no, there's no areas where the sun could pierce because, you know, Erebos is completely against uh, Heliot. So no sun. And it's just those candles. um, And they're all like melting over stacks and stacks of skulls. Um, and there's an altar with tons more of those skulls and those offerings and then roses and flowers and kind of looks like someone like when someone is passed and like there's like little little trinkets that people have left there and then there's these two uh flame like like braziers or like a cauldron kind of bubbling and but instead they're creating like a greenish flame that's flickering off the, the walls and she says yeah oh. and she kind of steps out of the way and she doesn't say anything as she kind of like moves. Um, and she 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 kind of walks over, puts her broom away, and then she grabs like a shroud of black. And once you guys walk in and she puts it over her eyes and ties it so that she's basically blind. But the way she moves, you can tell that she's pretty much can still see everywhere she goes. And she goes and kind of like creepily kind of glides to the corner and stands there and just stands in the corner, almost like almost to just stay out of your way because you've probably come in to pay your respects and she, she just kind of slinks away. Oh, lady, get back over here. What's your deal? <laughs> Excuse me. What's sure. your deal? You looked at us a little creepy outside. What do you uh, know? Can I, can a lady not share a hello with local passersby? 
if you are here to speak, why would you be, uh, if you are here to speak with me, I am but a vessel, I am no one. Pay your respects to the God of He doesn't even look true like that. Everlasting We've seen him. Life. He don't look like that. Hmm. Oh, okay. Quite, quite rude, aren't we? You started it. What did I start? My boy said you looked at him funny. The Minotaur? Well, he is a Minotaur. He probably gets those looks all the time. He probably felt some type of way. I am, that was not my intention. I apologize if you are offended, Minotaur. Or is this your feet. first time coming to, I understand it can be hard to pay your respects to death. It's hard to understand that how important it is. It's, it's something that is, we fear, but it is inevitable. There's no animosity here. There's no anger here. Well, you Talking can crazy lady. You, you can be calm, about fear. Seder. No fear here. We want to know. Seems like she she kind of glides forward, kind of moving towards you. What is it that you want to know? Why are you flying? Walk normal. <laughs> no. And, and you look down <laughs> for a second like you're like, she looks like she's gliding. When you look down her feet, she's clearly walking. It's okay. kind of like a... All right. All right. Okay. But you can't hardly see because she's it's a, her, her, you know, it's almost like a wedding dress. It just shrouds against the floor. Yeah. Okay. While that conversation's going on, is there anything else in this temple? And Zen, yes, yeah, you're please. you're standing there as well. So like you're all just kind of standing in the temple. I'm yes, just kind of, I'm just kind of like wanting to look around while he's interrogating her. Okay. <laughs> look around and see if there's like um, any... investigation check uh, or. Actually, because you probably don't have time to really pick around, so just give me perception uh, as you look around. Let's um, see a sign that I got to stab this lady. Please let me know because she's scaring me. <laughs> That'd be 23. I'm here to help with the stab. Okay. Um, I don't know what's happening, but I'm always ready to stab. Um, so as you walk in, you're able to kind of dip down. The, the opening is wide enough so the centaur is able to kind of kind of clop, clop, walk in and start to walk around. And she seems to be focused on Tail Moon. And so as she is, uh, you you go, you kind of end up in front of the statue, and right behind the altar. Uh, or on the altar, actually, but towards the back, you know, like one of the candles is kind of melting and, you know, almost like someone laid, like laid a cloth over and all that max that candle wax is running and drying over. You notice uh, that 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 fabric, torn fabric that looks like the frock looks like looks like it could be the same garb that the people were wearing. I'm going to take a dart from my side and kind of like cut a piece off while he's distracting her. Okay. Um, I will need a sleight of hand check there. Um, oh, 25. Okay, so um, let me make a roll for her perception. Oh, yeah. And tell me who's on our head right now. <laughs> like, don't tell me about Erebos. I roll with the son of Erebos, <laughs> lady. You don't know. You guys are rolling. Like, um, against all your social encounters, your roles have been crazy. I haven't been able to compete. Um, she does not notice um, as you tear the, the piece uh, to Zen. Is there anything behind the altar? Uh, it's just that statue. You look up and that statue of Erebos looming over you, the one without the horns, kind of looking down at you. For a second, you almost feel like it sees you, you know, but then maybe it's just you. Just kind of pretend to do something religious. Like, like you said, you got what you got on what you get on that perception check? Perception? I got 23 or 24. 23, yeah, yeah, you definitely. Okay. 
Um, and so you do something religious and uh, she seems to be growing tired of this kind of back and forth with, with, with Tail Moon. And she says, if your goal is to make me angry, you have to understand Erebos is to have a temple, to take, to be a caretaker of a temple of Erebos in a city like Akros, you have to understand that I have every little kid in the city throwing shit balls at me, uh, yelling at me. Uh, you will not, and I will, I have been here and I will not go, and you will not scare me away because I've got that power right there. Even He's though you're slipping on your watch? He's got your back, even though you let him return, run all over your city. That's not under your watch. There are no returned in this city. Not anymore. We killed them all. <laughs> You're a very bad liar. What are you? Ooh. What? She lied. What? We believe her. If you don't leave, I think I've had enough of this, and I'd actually would like you to leave. I've, if and she's kind of moving towards the door, like I'd like to. If I have to call the Akron soldiers, um, I will. Oh, I'm telling the bronze bullies are here. <laughs> we are living up to that name right now. <laughs> um, can I get an intimidation check? Yep. <laughs> that we can do. <laughs> oh, that's a 26. Okay. Bless up. Die is broken. I love this die. I'm only using this set from now on. Okay, so twenty. Yeah, you, you. So, so she's. Um. What is it? What is it that you want? Well, please leave me be. You obviously know something. A group of followers left the Temple of Perforos last night, and today they show up as revenants in your city. Erebos wouldn't support that type of behavior. So our goals should be aligned. Why are you giving us so much trouble over it? Tell us what you know. I've already told you what I know. Um, there are no returned. Her eyes are starting to kind of water. Um, are you the only keeper here? I am. I, I am. do not appreciate being... This little old lady I am being bullied by three large men. You should leave. You should be ashamed of yourself. Just as little as you are. <laughs> yeah, he's a satyr, ma'am. So what are you gonna do? What are what are you going to do? Well, they were returning the city and we did deal with them. We're trying to figure out where they came from. Uh do do you do you want to tear the temple apart? Do you want to search? Do you want to move move things around and find out where I'm bringing returned into the world? That would be nice. We can do that. Yeah. Is that an oh, invitation? Up, guys. Fine. And she steps towards the door. She kind of like steps out of your way. I just hope that uh, you know that those who desecrate Erebus Temple will have the wrath of him upon them. I think Erebos supports our cause more than he's supporting yours at the moment. Anyway, I'm <laughs> sacking. So he just starts slash <laughs> trash trashing the place, right? Like I'm, I'm getting out yeah, before anything. Respectfully, <laughs> Taraxes. Pers- <laughs> oh, oh, right, right. Tips things over a little softer. That's, that's still Proxy's dad. <laughs> so, um, as she steps back. She's watching you all, and you, Tarotis is you're you're trying to stop Trox. He's already like taking all of the skulls off the off the thing and start kind of like sliding, you know, moving the starting to move the uh, the altar. And she's just standing there, and like a tear starts to kind of trickle down her face. And then she goes from like frowning as kind of like a pulling back on the scene, and you know, Zen is in there. She's standing at the doorway she reaches her hands up and these black, she tries to close these black shawl. She closes the shawl behind her and um, she brings her hands down and all of your shadows, 
all of your shadows flickering from the candlelight start moving and now all those shadows start moving and then she starts levitating as um, the night hag is preparing her move. That's we'll crash good. to black and end there. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> I was trying to get to the forge just to build my shit. This is supposed to be a quick stop. Who <laughs> wants lobster scorpion? <laughs> Fitz, you want some? So this could be one of those like three Sounds days later. Now. Fitz is like, where are the guys? <laughs> they never showed up. Where are Bring all much. this lobster to ourselves. Oh. This is a shame they couldn't show up to the lobster party. This is oh why you God. stab first. <laughs> let me let me actively take my short rest that I would have had <laughs> at the place because apparently we're gonna fight a darn night hag. <laughs> Just had to bully the old lady. Yeah. We need she to talk to you about your dad. Your dad is not doing his job. <laughs> he out here too busy with your mama. I know. I see. I've seen it. But to call the boy, this ain't oh, right. I know. I'm sorry. This there's so much going on. And it's like it's 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 hard to keep and track call of. It, it, call it breaking my heart. <laughs> call it those. Saw it in my eyes. You saw if I was it watching this soul. show, I'd be like, "What is this? Like, <laughs> what is happening in this show?" You saw the excitement building, yeah. and Artemisia was about to tell on herself. She was about to let us know. She was about to spill the tea. Oh, like they just had to step in. Like it that thing, I decided to show up. Step in Damn. after the story. Oh man, <laughs> I need to know. I love it. I knew they weren't going to back down. I was like, man, this is a chance. Because I was like, you know, they could, they could, they can know something's up, but they could leave and go back and get the rest of the party. Our like, roles hey, want us to die. Yeah. Our roles want us to die. Yeah. That's oh, just what man. it is. And, and, and that means, well, you guys got some healing, right? But you don't have, you haven't taken a short, you guys technically haven't taken a short rest. You just like walked over there. I'm, I deliberately said, well, actually, no, that's not true. You think I'm going to go on a journey got, without no, 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 I'm sorry. Rest. Yeah, you got short rest because you talked to Tyrannica and that would have at least been an hour or two. So short rest for sure. Oh, not Tyrannica. Like we, we went back to the house and Oh, and then you second. guys went out. Got and it. And then okay. went out. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, we weren't just gonna be like, oh, then I'm then, then, then mood wise, it's even later than that. Then it's right around dusk. Then Good. so that's yeah, let's fight the night hag at night. <laughs> let's go. Good idea. Yes. We've got it. We're fine. Okay, any stronger. It's yeah, I mean, out. The party is split yet again. <laughs> like I have to yeah. figure out how this is gonna work. That's all right. We'll roll up new characters over the time, guys. It won't be problem. <laughs> We're gonna I smash should... cut between a fight for our lives <laughs> and a lovely dinner. <laughs> a lovely yeah, scorpion dinner. The three of us are coming back as followers of phoenix it's fine guys oh man i am a champion of helia don't worry about it you guys are gonna accept me right everybody loves helia they're getting tossed against